Oh, what is up, guys? How is it going? Hope you're very, very excited for the most handsome panel that I've ever assembled. And perhaps the most stylish because uh, Johnny has forced us to up our game here. So welcome for the long-awaited hero ban debate. We've talked about it a lot. It's something the community has wrangled with for what seems like years now. So it's time to finally assemble the brains trust and, and kind of have it out. So let me introduce my guests that need no introduction. To the right of me for his first appearance in a long time is my man Jake. Jake, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. Happy to be here. Um, I'm excited to, to see how this discussion goes because I think my position on it has kind of changed over time. Yeah, actually, let's do it like this. So when I when I introduce you, go ahead and give like a brief summary of like your stance on hero bands, just so we know where everyone stands. So Jake, like, what's your brief stance on hero bands? I would say I think it's I I think it could be interesting, could add to the game, but it all depends on implementation and format. I think like you'd have to like it'd be very different how it would affect like professional play versus ranked play depending on how you actually implement it um so i think that implementation question is really crucial uh, but i would like to see like an experimental uh like attempt at it right like what happens if we introduce this in a very limited way in like a ranked playlist or whatever um you know what is it like now, obviously i don't think it should just be like go straight to the to competitive like professional play but I think there's like something there and, and maybe there's implementation that adds to the game. Got you. I like it. Appreciate it. I've tried, to, I've tried to bring a balance panel and hopefully that will be uh, illustrated when they uh, give their takes. And Johnny was suited up. That's why I had to don the blazer here because Johnny came <laughs> with such drip that I didn't want him to be the only one sticking out like a sore thumb. So Johnny, how you doing? <clears throat> I'm good. I'm good. A little jet lag because I came in uh yesterday so you know woke up at like 5 30 this morning uh, i'm just ready to go so i'll i'll say this my stance of course you wrote this so i i'll explain why i'm dressed up right so you wrote in the discord that like you know a couple of us we have stances and then like me and jake are sort of like on the fence like we haven't really decided i did some thinking on the flight all right so i got my points i got my points written down okay i thought most of us actually would be on the same side so I figured I'd dress in a red shirt and, and like this kind of like a black blazer and I'd be the devil's advocate here. But I guess we don't need one. So I can, might as well just undress. Like, why am I dressed up as the devil's advocate? You, you wouldn't. Definitely undress. Take the, take the yeah, shirt off. I dare you. 100 <laughs> subs right now in chat. For a sub goal. Sub goal. Off. Yeah, we need, we need a sub goal for that. All right. You know, with, motivate, motivate it. Motivate okay, to undress. Okay. It. We'll see. I like it. He's but yeah, I, I figured I'd be the devil's advocate. But we'll see how this goes. Because, I, I, you know, I think there's some... I, I'm like Jake. I, I give it some thought, and I think I, I think I have a stance. I like it. I appreciate it. you. You not only did your homework, but you also then came dressed for the right occasion. So very <laughs> committed. You guys have a lot to live up to here. In the bottom left is Custa. Custa, how are you feeling about this? Yo, I'm good. Um, I am a hater of the hero bands. I'm actually kind of like Jake, where I used to. I used to be a big advocate when I was a player in like 2018, 2019, when we were in some dark ages of metas and stuff like that. I was a big advocate for hero bands. Um, but after 2020 and what we did in the Overwatch League with hero pools, just pools in general, I think it sort of opened my eyes to how chaotic the game becomes when you take like even just like one or two pieces out of the game. So I'm not a fan. I think it would be good in the future when we get a lot more heroes and heroes that do similar things. But for now, I think we should just rely on balance as we always have been in some way. Fair enough. And in the top left, my man who's always hitting the bingo card with the Hero Band discussion on the Group Up podcast, it is Frito. Frito, what's up? This is like a gift to me, SV, that you just assemble this together. It's been a dream uh, in our eye that we bring up every other week. So hoping to get some great perspective. So also as well, like um, we've got three former pro players and then the... Uh, uh theory crafting podcasters this is the big group up plat chat collaboration everybody's always wanted i think so <laughs> uh, a lot of fun uh, to be in this one true yeah yeah, yeah. so and, and to round it off you know i have been an advocate of hero bands for a long time i'm a bit of an oddball because i actually would love to see a day that uh, overwatch goes asymmetric so like more like an actual moba where it's like exclusive picks and uh you know ban like a draft phase basically but of course that's that's like a long list. That's like a wish list. I've, I've given up. I became old and jaded and I gave up on a lot of my desires. That's life. Um, <laughs> yeah, but... I forgot to actually answer the question you said to, to answer. So yes, that's my position as well. I would like to eventually have a, a draft mode down, down the line. But um, to open the door towards any kind of uh, ban would be good for me. And I think there's at least going to be one Overwatch League slash streamer format, uh, experimental style format, 
tournament, uh, I suppose, coming up that was announced, or they kind of like heavily hinted towards it. So to some degree, all of our speculation will come to have some evidence behind it with some pseudo high level gameplay as well. So we can kind of orient around that, I think would probably be smart. Yeah, I think so too. I think I think let's 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 do it like this because you know we usually we just kind of go at it. We start talking. Well, I want to bring structure to this rather unending argument to try and see if we can really dig deep into it. So you know, there's Jake's concerns about like, well, okay, we can talk about hero bands. Well, how do we actually implement it? So we'll get to that in a bit. But first, I want to talk like philosophically, big picture, the pros and cons of a hero band system, and then we can get into like, well, okay, if we went into hero bands, how would it look in Overwatch? How would it be most palatable? Right. So. As, and I, I'm going to try again, so although I am pro hero bands, I'm going to, like Johnny, because we're the guys in the suits, we're going to devil's advocate, Jake will be the normal human, Frito for Custa against. Normal human. <laughs> I'm a human too, man. Come on now. You're not, fooling, Swedish. you're not fooling anyone, Johnny. You're not fooling anyone. You're European like me, all right? We're not normal. We don't count. Um, right. So I'm going to have Frito give me your sort of best rounded spiel for why hero bands should be a thing in Overwatch, and then we will respond, and then we'll let Custa then rebuttal. So go ahead, Frito. Sounds good. Okay, I'll start. Season two, the tank metas, uh, like so in ranked, and then also the Overwatch League. I'm pro for both, but open to uh, either one. I think at the very least, at the highest levels of play, it makes the most sense when you get, let's say, a casual viewer turning into the Overwatch League Grand Finals tournament. And five heroes are played like 99% of the time. Now, we're, we were very fortunate this year around that those happen to be five very entertaining heroes to watch. But a casual fan who is uh, believing that counterpicking and different strategies and sort of uh, diversity of your own playstyle is core to what Overwatch the game is, to see that play out, it kind of reminds me of back in the day when like Call of Duty struggled with this a bit to become more of a competitive format where sometimes less is more. So in Call of Duty, for example, they have claymores and other gadgets and stuff that was never used in the, the pro context because they add, um, let's say, uncompetitive aspects to the game. And I think often at a high level, especially with pre-made teams, um, certain combos can be oppressive to the degree of monopoli monopolizing strategy. Now, there's been a lot of steps forward to help this along, like, for example, picking your own maps, um helps diversify that a lot but sometimes we are subject to a bad balance patch and that's the easiest argument that in an era of unbalanced gameplay which i would argue is maybe the majority of timeline of overwatch's history um and we're due for another one like like don't don't be blinded by the season three diversity uh i think before you know it a new combo is going to come out and it's going to be hard for them to balance and then we're waiting months and so the, based on the timeline of development, essentially, to catch us up, to try to correct the game, to put it back into a balanced state, uh, bans are kind of required to do that. And that's uh, more obvious at a high level, but it also can happen for the ranked environment last season with Roadhog and Orisa kind of terrorizing just about every rank, I'd say. Um, I think it can be beneficial in both contexts. So I think that's the uh, overview. Uh, I hope I've done a decent mm -hmm. job explaining that. I'm sure there's much, much more to say, but maybe a good oh, place there to is. start. Oh, there is definitely is, but yeah, I think that's a good. That is a good place to start. Just to sort of, yeah, I guess I guess right now we're in a state where the meta is pretty diverse, at least in ranked. I, I I'm not in touch with the hero uh, pro play, so feel free to correct me, you guys, if you those of you who are more familiar. But it does seem at least in ranked is, and even actually there's a dev blog that released released today that suggested the same. The devs personally feel very happy with the balance. They feel like there's a lot of diversity, a lot of different heroes are winning, but a lot of the time, and as Frida said, perhaps the majority of the time we've had you know, balance matters where something is very obviously sticks out like a sore thumb. The community gets frustrated. They're like, wait, wait why won't the devs do anything? The devs don't respond according to the community quickly enough. And this is where one potential, uh, you know, hero bands is the potential solution. So I'm going to take it to Jake now. On that initial philosophical idea, Jake, like, do you think that the hero bands can either add or alleviate a large amount of like the, the balance frustrations that will inevitably come with Overwatch? Or will they compound yeah, it? I guess I guess I do think it will alleviate the balance concerns because when you have, um, like for instance, I would say just to to break down the individual metas of the last season, um, there was like in the Overwatch League season, I mean, um, so there was some diversity. I think like a couple of the stages were kind of diverse, but then two of the stages were like ultra dominated by the Junker. There's the Junker Queen Brig Lucio comp, and then there's the Kiriko comp for the playoffs, and 
um, the thing about both of those comps is that they're just like, like it's inevitable, I think, because it's like a commercial product to make Overwatch that when they make a new hero, they're going to make it like slightly overtuned. And in a way, that's what they should do because since it's a new hero, it's kind of debuffed in a way that like nobody knows how to play it. You have no experience on it. So it's going to, it's going to need to be mathematically a little bit overtuned if you had like some you know, like, we've all played the game for 10 years, like, with Junker Queen, then, okay, yeah, Junker Queen is going to become stronger throughout those 10 years, but when she immediately drops, she'll be at the weaker end when nobody knows how to play her, um, or, like, what comps to run with her and stuff like that, how to, how to execute. But then pretty quickly, people do figure that out, but, you know, so there's always going to be that weirdness. They want the hero to be, like, people want to play this day one and be excited to play it because of it. its commercial product they want to sell skins and, and it's a new hero like it kind of would suck if this new hero comes out it's like when anna dropped it very very early on in the game she was like really bad like really really bad like unplayable bad because her like all of her kit was worse she had like a much longer she reload, had like six bullets mag. or something like that yeah, right it was like yeah, it was like yeah, kind of absurd like how weak she was and she got buffed like four times to make her good but, but you don't want to do that you kind of want to start with the hero too strong and then tone them down the problem is in the pro level the time of like how how long it takes you to like get to the hero's potential is very short and so even within like a week or two of practicing the junker queen and the kiriko for the respective metas those comps completely took over and there was no no coming back it was like oh yeah like it didn't take us that long to figure out how to play junker queen because they're professional players they play the game all day and they're like experts at the game so they can kind of have intuition about what's the best and just copy whoever else is playing the most broken comp and use it yourself and get good at it and then the Kiriko is like, okay, it's just like this old completely busted. You automatically win the game when you press the old. You know, like that's you know, like these are so as those heroes get locked in as a one trick, and then pretty quickly, I think it's very rare for there to be like a true one trick god broken hero, and then the rest of the meta isn't hard locked on the rest of the heroes. Because usually when there's one super broken hero that's you hard lock, there's like a comp that is the best with this hero. If you and you're because you're mirror matching, like you're you're both gonna play Kiriko because Kiriko's so super broken, and then it kind of just the other heroes flow from that that broken hero. Okay, what's the best comp with Kiriko? It's like okay, Winston's super broken with Kiriko because you can you don't have to aim when you shoot fast, which is really good for the Kiriko. Like bunch of Winston jumps and Winston bubbles is super broken. The primal can like bait the Kiriko. Everything is good for Winston um, in this matchup. So you're gonna play Winston. You're gonna play Lucio because you want to engage and disengage. You know, Sojourn. May, may, maybe there's like some flexibility in the DPS, like. But in the end, like Reaper, okay, Reaper's really good against Winston. It's also easy to aim when you're using the Kiracol. Like every hero just synergizes together, and then you end up with a hard locked no no swapping comps, um, which is what we get in both of those seasons or both of those patches where there's like a new hero that comes out. And I would say if Sojourn didn't have the period of like post release, okay, she's too strong to in her. That was like before Overwatch League really got started. Um, and so the hero was never in like, like the very beginning of season, well, like this beginning of the season, she wasn't like this ultra dominant, take the game over hero. And so there was more diversity, but both times there's a new hero coming out during the Overwatch League season. It's super dominant because of like the nature of the game development and like what they have to do. And then it completely takes over the game. So that is the type of balance meta that you're going to continue to see be a problem that takes over the game with like a hard one trick meta. And what, so as far as implementation goes, the implementation that I'd be interested in seeing in a hero ban meta or, or a hero ban system is something that prevents you from, since an Overwatch League series takes multiple maps, it prevents you from banning the same hero multiple times. So for instance, if Kiriko is super broken, you're going to one-trick Kiriko, then at least you'll be one-tricking Kiriko. You can't play her on one map. I mean, it, unless no one wants to ban her, maybe they just bear a match. Probably the team who's losing is going to like ban her. But only one map. And the rest of the time, you're going to still get a ton of playtime on Kiriko. She's going to be played, you know, whatever it is, four out of five maps. Um, and then the other hero, you might ban the other heroes that are popular in the super dominant comp. And then, okay, you'll still be playing Kiriko because she's still broken. And But you'll be fitting her. In, if Winston's banned, maybe you're playing Roadhog with her. You know, if if uh, Lucio's banned, maybe you're playing like a poke comp with like Bap and Kiriko. And maybe that would change some other heroes too. The downside of this though is on a professional level, the game gets really chaotic when you have like unknown, like you don't know what you're gonna play going into the map. Bro, I'm not gonna so lie. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Let me. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna interject yeah, here. Just, go, go ahead, you Custer. Go. Custer, I'm you boiling, go first. Bro. I'm boiling. Just go. <laughs> uh, so the it's funny because Jake, I actually think we had a conversation about this on Plat Chat where you talked about mm -hmm. the infinite number of probabilities that exist when entering into an Overwatch League match or anything like that of high end competition. The problem with hero bans that I have after the 2020 imp implementation is we had hero pools on a weekly rotation. So essentially we took four heroes out of the game every week and that's how we played the Overwatch League in 2020. What that did is it gave did not give sufficient enough practice 
to the Overwatch League teams to be able to figure anything out that it really just became a crapshoot of like who's trying to work it out in a week, right? And this is where my pain point comes with hero bands of the idea of it becomes a crapshoot and it becomes the team that can best adapt to the, you know, the changes in the hero bands. That is exciting, but it's also that would be such a fundamental change of how Overwatch is played at the biggest level. And it would just make it a lot more complex. And I think with the limited number of hero roster and the fact that there are not many pieces that you can take out and replace, like Lucio, for example, no one can do what Lucio does. So if you take him out, the game changes in so many different ways because you've taken out an entire style of playing the game. So because there's not those little bits and pieces, it will become problematic and it reduced the quality of the matches in 2020 so much. And it was absolutely awful to watch because no one was playing well. And then teams were just good based on a week to week basis of, oh shit, they banned our worst heroes or oh shit, they banned our best heroes. And that, that added so much variation. And that's mm -hmm. not even adding to the level of, you know, going back to what Frito said of... Diversity is the core way that Overwatch is played, right? And that's, you know, at a casual level, we all agree you should be able to play multiple things. But the truth behind it is casual players don't. Like, casual players want to play their one hero right, right, and they sorry, will sorry, not sorry. enjoy gonna, the game. I'm just going to interrupt here because what I want to do is because we've got a lot of opinions and we've got a lot to discuss. Oh, sorry, so yeah, I'm going to try and keep it focused on right. one thing at a time. So we're going to, let's let's talk now pro level. We brought up the example, you know, Jake did a great job of kind of illustrating why things become, you know, one-tricked almost at the pro level and a potential solution that he provided. Kusta has said, well, it's horrible from the pro level when, you know, we had hero pools. Johnny has been molding his ass off, so I'm going to let Johnny have his uh, have his say. And then, we'll again, we'll stick to the pro level for now, and then we'll talk for the competitive and, you know, casual player later. So, Johnny. Right. Yeah, okay. D Devil's Advocate, Kusta. Hero bans was like four heroes. They removed four heroes every week. That, that was absolutely ridiculous, okay? If you're implementing hero bans, you know, into the Overwatch League, you're in, into the game and stuff, it's probably like one ban each. <laughs> so we're looking at two now, and we've added a bunch of heroes to the game since then, remember? That was like in the drought, bro. We were playing Paris when Hero Pool, it, 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 like <laughs> Hero Pool and stuff. Dark it, days. It, man. it was, the, <laughs> dude, you remember how long it was that released? Now, I was like, you just brought it up, it, it, it triggered the something PTSD deeper. Just takes, like, <laughs> um, Unreal, man. Echo I mean, was truth. like the most released, uh, recent hero of like two years. So Hero And then bans, they banned I mean, her, actually, they banned her in the Hero Pools immediately. If you remember. They did actually, yeah, they did. So, I mean, one hero ban each, okay? Uh, okay, w w it's Jotes meta. You remove Junker Queen. Thank God we get to watch something other than Junker Queen for a, for a single match even. A single match in the Overwatch League. Now, you know, I'm, 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 I'm stepping on two areas here as Devil's Advocate because Jake's system also sucked because you can't just ban every map. Like, are we going to go back to like... We're going to the banning screen every map in like a five map series. It's like, no, we can can't I, do that. Can we're not going to submit Yeah, go ahead, Jake. implementation so that you can critique it and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I think that's a legitimate concern. I don't think you should go back and go to the banning piece. But, but I also think it's not a MOBA. It's a one. My, this, the system that I would defend is one ban each team, blind ban. So there's no pick order. You submit it with your roster. So you just like, you go in, we're going to Dorado. It's like, okay. Like, so on a series that's like the preset maps, right? It's like, okay, we're going to the Dorado here. And then the teams all say, okay, no subs. And then they all say, I ban Widowmaker. And then the other team says, I ban Hanzo. Okay. Yeah. And then so like I we're loading into Dorado and it's like, oh, cool. Outlaws ban Widow and Shock ban Hanzo. We're just like, the game has already begun. It's like, you don't have a, there's no screen where we say, who are they subbing in? I mean, maybe you do. You're like, mention it. Oh, I guess they're going to bring in this guy. Maybe the like you feed it to the casters and they can say, oh, you know, this player's coming in for Junker Town, whatever, right? But it's not, there's no screen, there's no, like, graphics. It's just, like, maybe a little graphic on the screen. It's, okay, like, these are the hero. Like, when the map is loading in, you're 60 seconds of doing nothing while the players are ready yeah, to Yeah, with the map set or something. Like, a side thing on the map set, you yeah, know, chose the same map. You, yeah. like, load into Dorado like normal. You watch an ad, you load into Dorado. We're in, uh, the teams are rolling out from spawn. <laughs> and as they're rolling out from spawn, we say, oh, Junker Queen's finger, baby. 
what yeah. ads? So yeah, whatever, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean. So basically, I don't want any kind of graphic or any kind of like. There wouldn't even be a pick order to it in my system because you just do it blind. So if you both ban Widowmaker, okay, there's one ban this map. Like this is how yeah. it does. Or you could have like, two choice. Uh, you could have a secondary choice if they both happen to or something. No, 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 no. Because yeah, I don't want no. I don't want the teams that have any priority. Like there's like a value to banning second if you see their ban. Yeah, you sure. Can, like, yeah. Ban okay. Got you. Yeah. Fair. And Fair. so I want it to just be like a blind ban. So there's no. You don't have to worry about like my home team or away team. Do I ban first? Like that makes it even more complicated. So just this yeah. like the most simple system I can I can come up with basically. So yeah. it's a blind ban. I, I think submit it good. with the roster, and then there's only so there. And then there's only one or two hero bans, and your ban is block. You cannot ban again on a on a future map. This this match. So that's why you said let's play no Junker Queen this match. That would never happen if Junker Queen's broken. The max you would see is two Junker Queen bans. Because I banned it on the cough first round and you banned it on the second round. And then now we can no longer ban Jugger Queen. It will be in the pool. So, and this is the See, I just ban it for the series personally because it's yeah, yeah, less, well, less things I, to do. So, yeah, that could be, that could be true. I think it's not that much of okay, a problem because well, there's already the roster. Okay, we're, we're, so, fellas, sorry, sorry. I, I, I will have thing. to keep stepping in here. I will, I will have to keep yeah, stepping yeah. just to keep our structure. Um, so, we're kind of now getting into like the nuances of implementation. Custer brought like a more philosophical I, objection of what it does to the pro scene. So I'm going to let Frito respond with like the idea of like, well, we had hero pools and that went badly. Yeah. I, yeah. I, and I also, I don't want to forget, there's a couple format things I'll, I'll tie in later, but um, so hero pools, I think hero pools is quite a straw man to this argument because what it does is limit the overall set. Whereas in a directed band, you would do it based on the team's lineup. So you would know whether or not, the enemy team that you're going against is good at this meta, that meta, whatever, and you could target, like, so in the rank context, people are terrified of this, of targeting players, but if you are against um, a top-level Widowmaker versus a average Widowmaker, that might change whether, uh, irrespective of whether Widow is meta or not, or, or let's put Sojourn in that category. Like, for example, if you are happy and you are playing sojourn your team's not going to want to ban sojourn because you you are one of the best or or maybe i'm misremembering uh whoever uh who's the, is that the Gong, guangzhou back to beast at sojourn yes oh, yes and that, not from guangzhou, but... uh anyway he um was in the charge years ago <laughs> not for sojourn. yeah i'm misremembering it's been a while since we've had the league actually now but uh in any case like you see my point like teams that are dominant in a given meta would want to ban away from it so that is different than the global bans for the entire league versus based on a cat picking, which is literally what we're talking about. So we, yeah, I don't. None of us have to. Like, yes, none of like us have to defend <laughs> hero pools because hero pools was a ridiculous idea, and I understand that. Now, based on the uh, chaos point that it's adding, I think it's no different than the chaos that you get when loser picks the next map, which we do in fact see uh, equalizes the playing space quite a bit because the loser picking might go to a home map maybe they're a dive team or a brawl team and they get to go there and likely swing back into the series now uh, some people might say well we would rather see the most dominant teams like sweep the floor but as a viewer anyway i kind of prefer those uh comeback maps and if a series is going to be i take a map you take a map and it's going to be a bit lopsided like that or, or let's say uh ping pongy like that not lopsided like it goes back and forth it being on the team's expressed desired strategy always feels better than, let's say, when, uh, Jake, I think you're on this team, at, at, when uh, there's the famous Reddit clip, of course, of the Houston Outlaws being booed at home, I believe, when you uh, switch two goats and the team wants you to play a different comp, right? Because as a, that's the epitome yeah, right, right, right. of the of the viewing experience. Sorry to remind Why would I do that? That was such a jerk no, thing to do. That, it, that's such like, a we play this anti-social YouTuber goats, comment. And then they're playing Winston Goats, so we need to, we need to play Goats. We can't win. So gotcha. It's, right, right. We're just seeing one hero and then we're playing a new con. We're yeah, not loving our gauge, no Vorch. Every analyst, of course, knows and respects your decision and says, well, that's the right call. You have to do that. But as a viewer, you want to see them express themselves on the comp you, and heroes specifically often that you think they're good at. Maybe like Doomfist would be another example of a hero that in certain metas in the past season was good and then all of a sudden like wasn't really relevant anymore. So it kind of was sad to see teams lose that. So teams that are good at those specialized strategies would want to ban towards that. So automatically the whole random pools idea just wouldn't happen. And I don't think we have to debate this uh, theoretically much longer because we will see it in the tournament coming up. So um, I'm trying to see if I'm forgetting anything. So the chaos of the of the pools, def it definitely does add more chaos, but I think we're underestimating how much more structured it would be based on the personality of each team and the rosters they have, as well as what you would want to target. And um, 
while I still have the floor, I suppose there's a couple other format things I wanted to toss out. Maybe that's better for another section SV, but yeah, um, Apex had one, and then um, there's two, I believe, that I'm trying to recall. Go ahead. No, no, you can just, you just throw out your thoughts, and then we'll come to them later. Okay, so I want to I want to know you what you want to say. Had a like comeback tournament with a bunch of the. I think like Lunatic High players the and legends. maybe Kongu Panthera. They did a show match where the ban phase was a one I've never seen before. It was like regressive where you have lots of bands, but they cascade backwards map to map where let's say there's, um, I don't know, six bands overall, but each map you get more added it back into the pool. And so that's one way you could do it where you submit the bands first and then map to map, you already know what's going to happen next. As because what uh, the expertise of our other guests on the the show here today add a perspective that me and SV never care about because it's we get to sit in our pajamas watching the games as opposed to being on the ground where you have to worry about the delay between matches and all that. So I think that helps alleviate that where the strategy is front loaded and then it cascades back. Uh, the other format that I like um, is loser picks a ban. So if you are that now that might boost the underdog team a little bit, but I think sometimes the gap in skill is so much that I don't mind seeing that anyway. And maybe there's competitive integrity uh, arguments against that. And it maybe empowers a worse team more because then you could build your roster to be more specialized. And then if you're sitting over here with the max player pool and you're like, well, we're ready for every meta. Why should I allow this rule set to apply? Because it would bias towards a, a more, let's say, a money ball roster, I suppose. But as a viewer, I appreciate that for the same reasons why I appreciate them going to their own map because I don't want to see a blowout. I want to see each team express themselves on strategies they're actually capable of running. I seem to remember, like, um, I can't remember exactly the tournament you guys might remember, but, like, for example, when the Florida Mayhem had Yaki and they were in one of these tournaments and they were kind of like a punch-above-their-weight type team and maybe they'll go to a more Tracer-friendly map and utilize him more in a meta that it wasn't Tracer-dominant or something. I, I, I might, My memory might be failing me here, but... That kind of stuff is uh, exciting to see as a viewer, and that's what I'm trying to create whenever I'm uh, advocating for these types of changes. Okay, uh, so, SVB, hey, can I just like I want it'll take ten seconds, but go like ahead, but I ahead. think that's, that I think that is where me and Frito's biggest um, like pain point comes from is that point is from a competitor standpoint, and when I'm watching competition, I want to see the better team win more often than not, right? And I think when you add hero bands and you start adding this implementation of things are getting banned and that gives advantage to the team that is less skilled because the game becomes more chaotic and free flowing. I don't like that. I, if Overwatch went that way and we had tons of heroes and it became this thing of, it's the people who are the most flexible who can adapt on the fly and that kind of stuff. If that's the philosophy Overwatch wanted to go to as a whole, I'm down, right? But that is such a big fundamental change of where the game of Overwatch is now. And I don't think it's realistic to do. And that's essentially where I want to go. No, I don't know if that is true, though. I think that's an assumption. I think, like, I might even agree with Custa to that point if I believed that is what would happen. I just think it makes the series closer instead of a blowout, is my assumption. And if your uh, name's proper, you can ban... You're not banning proper out of the game no matter what you ban. You get 12 bans, and he's still going to come out and, and whoop you. So that, that's how I feel about it. I still think the result will still be the same. I think we'll have a better view of this when we see it actually in implementation with a higher level gameplay. I guess on that I guess, point, uh, yeah, go ahead, Jake. Or you, so what I wanted to mention is you, you said like this idea of that the hero bands benefit the bad teams because it's chaotic. I think that was true in the, the hero pools for like the weak system because, okay, let's say you take these four heroes out of the game. There is still like a broken meta in that game with four less heroes, but nobody knows what it is. And it's really hard to figure out what it is in a week because it takes a lot of time to like go through the process of like, okay, this counters that, but this is too many swaps. So this is like, this one's the stronger version. Okay, can we counter this with like a swap efficient strategy, right? Like, so you keep going through that process until you come up with the comp that cannot be beaten with a swap efficient counter comp. Like you can beat it with, there's usually some kind of counter comp that wins, but usually it's really swap inefficient. Like for instance, maybe you could beat this Junker Queen comp if you go like some far mercy, all flyers, and then we go two hit scan and you lose. You know, like we switch just the DP, like instead of playing Reaper, we're going to play two hit scan and your far is dead, it's like over. You know what I mean? So you just can't play those comps. You're switching five heroes. I switch just one DPS, you lose. So that it's not a viable yeah, can, counter. Can you slow down for a moment and explain to the viewers what you mean by like swap efficient? Kind of like step, okay, okay, step yeah, us yeah. through so why that's a bad thing. Let's take a comp like the Junker Queen, like Junker Queen Lucio Brig what was it Genji Sojourn? That was that was the hard lock meta. So that comp might be bad. I'm just theorizing. I don't actually know. Probably it is. Probably kind of bad against Farah because or like Echo, like full flyer commitment, like Mercy commit with a flyer. 
uh, with like Zen and Ball or something. Some like stay away and poke you down with flyers because there's no core hit scan and the Sojourn might not get rail enough to kill Farah or Echo or whatever. But then you just cut the Genji and you play or whatever. You cut the Sojourn and play a core hit scan and then you just kill the Farah. No problem. You don't care anymore. So that's like in order to play the Farah comp, you're playing Mercy, Farah, Ball, and like, you know, some other weird heroes that aren't in the Junker Queen comp. And then the Junker Queen comp might lose to that exact set of heroes. And then the Junker Queen comp switches exactly one hero, probably, to like a core hit scan, like a Cassidy or a Soldier or whatever. And now they can kill the Flyer. Now your comp doesn't win anymore. So you go back to Junker Queen. But you need to, now to go back to Junker Queen, you switch five heroes. And then all I have is two hits can't. Then I just switch one guy back. And so I basically I stay ahead tanked. on ults. By, by minimizing how many swaps I do to beat your comp. So your counter comp has to be able to respond to swaps efficiently, at least close. Sometimes you can like cheese a fight and then they're going to switch one hero and you're going to switch two heroes. And that's like, that's okay. You and, still this, gotta and this brings win. us back to your point about, well, why would this benefit the worst team? Yes, yes, thank you. And so the, the, the main reason I think it won't benefit the worst team with, with like an active ban is that usually the way worst teams win in the Overwatch League is by cheesing. So what that means is like, like if you're like the, I would say the London Spitfire is the example of this. London Spitfire is like, the, there's a, and, and like Chengdu Hunters during the GOATS meta. There's an advantage to being the only team that plays what you play and that everybody else is one trick and comp. So you get like this advantage by, by switching off the meta. You have to be able to win. I mean, it's like, it has to be good enough and you have to be very good at it to be able to like beat the core meta comp, but you can perfectly understand the matchup because London plays Ryan May, Cassidy, all day long against the meta they every single scrim they play this matchup and as all the opponent teams you've never once played against ryan nobody else plays it you can't and you don't practice against london because you, that's your match this week so you've never experienced playing this comp into ryan you have like an idea of how you think you should beat ryan and you probably can but they know exactly how to beat your comp even if your comp's like 60 40 favored they have their ability to practice the matchup over and over and over again, and you cannot do that because no one else will practice it with you. Unless like a contenders team, you ask to play the comp, but they don't know what they're doing, so it's not really good practice. So there's no, so London London gets an advantage off of that, off of being the team. It's like we're gonna force this weird comp. They get some kind of boost from that, and they can beat teams that are like quote unquote better that they can't win in like a straight up mirror match on the Junker Queen comp because they're they're right. like individual skills so too high. So, so, so let, let him finish. Is, let him finish. London is way so, to bands, more screwed to bands. by hero bans than than the team who plays metas. Because if you just play the meta all day, sure they can ban the meta, but it's like the reason London can win is that they can play Rhyme. It's not because they can play like all these four different heroes and you're one tricking Junker Queen. No, no, the team is playing Junker Queen probably can play everything because you're if you're one tricking the meta, you consider yourself to be like a team who could win with the meta. And if you're London, you say, we can't win with this. We're going to play our spe spe special unique cheese that we made for ourselves. And then you're way more screwed as London losing your cheese pieces that you like need to win versus like, okay, you ban Junker Queen. All right, let's just play a Winston Mirror. Guess who's better at the game? Like it's us, you know, if, if we're right. like the, the team with way individual, way stronger individual players, it doesn't matter as much losing individual pieces. Okay. It's not going to be a Kiriko one trick meta. We'll play on a Zen. Okay, we are we're better players. We have a better widowmaker than whatever, right? So right. so the, the teams that are lower skill and cheese to win are actually like way more screwed by this suggestion because you just it's cheesing to win becomes really bad when you're losing your cheese pieces. You need that's your advantage as the cheeser, that you know your strategy perfectly and the enemy doesn't understand it. And right. that goes away when when you introduce a skill based hero ban system where it's actually people deciding what to ban, not like there's a secret hidden meta this week, who's gonna find it out first? Like that right. I think is a highly RNG system versus bands that go like based on the team's input in the match. Right. So to try just to try and briefly summarize for you know, because Jake, I love exactly what everything you said there. And just for anyone who maybe wasn't able to follow the the five head, I think to try and summarize and correct me if I'm wrong, Jake. Basically, the more you strip down the game to be like, let's just play Overwatch, right? And that's what bans are doing. They're like taking away a potential for you to have ironed out a perfect comp. You're like, we know exactly the ins and outs of this comp. The same way that a one trick works in a ladder system, right? It's like, why do people get top 500 playing Torb? Because they're the only person who know how to play Torb on this map in this scenario. And they know how to be all the, the characters you play. So the more you allow that kind of specialization, the more likely it is a technically inferior team can win. But the more you strip the game down to like, I'm taking away your crutches... Just play Overwatch now. You're saying the better team is likely to win. Is that a fair summary? Yeah, yeah. The cheesers need to understand the cheese better than the team playing the meta. The team playing the meta, that's the advantage of the cheesers, that you understand the matchup and the other team doesn't. Got you. So, so now reinforce. Uh, eliminating the, the cheeses or, or making it more chaotic, you can't really... Cheesing doesn't really work if it's a very if it's a high, more chaotic 
situation. And I wouldn't call the hero pool system from previous, I wouldn't call that a chaotic situation. I call it like RNG. It's like, right. It's like, it's already, the role has been completed and we're going to play a bunch of matches now versus when we go into the match. Like if you're London, you can no but, longer uh, say Jake, we're all right, all right, I'm going to have to cut you off. Sorry. I'm going to have to <laughs> yeah. cut you off because okay. Johnny's been very patient. He's been very patient. <laughs> and once more, he's boiling. So Johnny, what, what was your objection? No, I, I well, I think actually it, it, part of it is a good point because I think one of the biggest uh, misconceptions when we actually discuss hero bans as like a functionality within Overwatch is that people on Reddit, for good reason, I don't know why I said Reddit, it, literally everywhere, and it, was, it could be us, it could be us. People on podcasts, the they, all, they make this assumption that like, well, if you introduce hero bans, we're just, go we're just going to remove the most annoying characters in the game. We're just going to remove, like, the, the broken heroes. We're just going to remove all the broken heroes. All the obnoxious stuff is going to be solved. And we'll be happy. And it's going to be wonderful. Because we'll just remove all the broken, boring, annoying, overpowered characters. Which is not true. Because what Jake is sort of saying, you know, part of the argument. I'm not saying that's what, this is what you said. But it's like, teams in a professional setting... They would just ban like what would give them a higher percent chance of winning. Like they don't care if something is broken. They don't care if it's overpowered. If they are better at it, they are going to give themselves the higher chance of winning. So in many ways, if you're saying that hero bans would have pre prevented the playoffs meta, then yeah, maybe um, the playoffs meta being you know five characters, pretty much the entire playoffs, right? If you yeah, maybe it would have prevented it some matches. But the teams who are like great at Kiriko, the teams who are fantastic at Sojourn. Hangzhou Spark, uh, Dallas Few, like these teams, they're going to be like, we, yo, we're going to remove the, the heroes that m like makes it easier for us to play Sojourn, that makes it easier for us to play Kiriko. And we're going to empower this uh, five hero lineup that is so good for us. So in some ways, it kind of works like, you know, yes, give and take, like, yes, we give you one opportunity to remove one hero in our Jotes meta, for a different example. Well, you'll be able to remove Junker Queen in the Jotes meta, which kind of broke my argument because that would be really good. Uh, but <laughs> then at the same time, the Jotes team would be like, well, we're, we'll remove Farah. You can't play Farah against us in the Jotes meta. So that's a misconception. Jo hero oh. hero bans wouldn't so just like solve the game. It just was going to make it way more fun. Um, and another thing I wanted to add in there, because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like all, all three of you, have sort of argumented for, you know, like com competitive integrity and like what it makes the matches closer. The, the way I stand on this, the reason why I'm on this podcast is would hero bands make the game more fun? Would it make the Overwatch League more entertaining? And so I don't really care if it, you know, makes the shock dominate harder or if it makes Paris Eternal finally win a match, but like, or Vegas Eternal, sorry, they're a new team now. Uh, I, I don't really care how close the matches are. As a viewer, as a fan of the game, does it make the game more fun? And that's kind of like where, where I'll be making my arguments from today. And so, yeah, we can dive into that. that's a very fair base yeah. to, to come from. Yeah. I mean, I think that's like a key, key question for any system. Yeah, can I add I on to I... what Johnny said here before you change subjects? Yeah, no, I was just gonna, I was gonna say to, uh, to ask Johnny, do you think then, I know you're being devil's advocate, but do you think it would make it more fun? Uh, wow, that's a loaded question because I, I, I would like unleash all my, you know, you know, opinions at once. Um, the short answer is probably yes, but I mean, we can dive into the so we can talk implementations later. potentially, I, right? I do think that like some of the formats have, that have been this suggested so early on the podcast, I think it's like too convoluted. I think it's too complicated. Um, I, I don't think it's a fun system. To me, it has to be like straightforward. It has to be easy and everyone needs to get it. Each team going into an Overwatch League match, they ban a hero for the series. They Like a blind ban at the start of the, zero, the series. Like Jake was like, well, you submit the roster. Yeah, you submit the roster for the series. We're just banning Junker Queen this series. And that's the one ban we get. And the other team, they can also ban Junker Queen or they ban something else. And that would be an easy implementation. It would increase the variety, in my opinion, and also, it wouldn't be complicated because you wouldn't have to decide a ban and you'd have to fucking slack the teams and just like, what hero are you banning? Please respond. <laughs> and they do like a team meeting with rolling ads, like 10 minute wait for this ban to come in. No, decide it before the series, one ban each. It would force some variety um, in that you wouldn't see the same composition each series. So it'd be better for the viewer. And I don't think it'd hurt the competitive integrity.
So right. I think Johnny, I... that will, that system is cool, but it cannot happen because Blizzard makes a new hero and they want it to be played in the Overwatch League. So they'll never create exactly. a system that allows you to eliminate. Yes, it. that's that's why I would have the limitation. Uh, okay, well, so again, we'll, we'll get to we'll get yeah. to implementations again. And to quickly summarize, to summarize what Johnny said again for those who are struggling to keep up with these five heads, all thro throwing their ideas out. I think what Johnny kind of spoke to there was probably to debunk the hero like the ban meta argument because i think that's essentially what you were getting at right it's like a lot of people have said well if you have hero bans what you'll have is a ban meta and i and i guess what johnny's alluding to there as well not everyone wants to ban the same thing I, I, we were talking starcraft before the podcast and there's a, there's a good saying in starcraft which is like if both players want to attack one of them is wrong and that's the idea of like well if you're both like one person should have the lead and the other person is down. Like, that's always the case. Even in Overwatch, one person is better at this comp, one person is worse. If you both think you're better, one of you is wrong. One of you is better, the other one is wrong. So it shouldn't make sense that both teams would want to do the same thing because either they'll both play the same thing and the, one of them will lose or one of them knows they're worse and is like, okay, well, I got to stop that happening. So it kind of debunks the the ban meta argument. I want to quickly, I know Frito has something to say, but I want to quickly let Custer respond because he's, you know, the, as the anti-ban advocate here, any thoughts on the sort of what we've alluded to with the ban meta almost, right? The, the, the ban meta, would it exist? I, I completely agree with you guys. There's, if you're, like, let's use Jotes because I think it's a great example. If you're the best team at Jotes, you're not going to ban Junker Queen, right? Like, that doesn't make sense to you. Um, you're going to ban something that you, you think your opposition is going to ban Junker Queen and that allows you to ban something against them. The reason I'll bring it back to of like, I agree with you, uh, Jake, of like, London Spitfire will get hurt by this because they're good at a cheese comp. But I'm not as much talking about a cheese comp as the loser having uh, advantage in closing the gap. I'm more talking about, let's say it was like Shock versus the Dallas Fuel, right? Like two great teams. The losing team is the one that is retroactively able to change the game in a way that helps them, right? Of they lost the first map. Then in the second map, they're like, well, do we want to take that head to head again and ban the same thing? Or do we want to do that? That obviously comes down to the system and stuff like that. But I think it would make the games more competitive because, as you said, the losing team has the ability to change the game every single ban uh, in the way that they want to. Um, so it could be interesting. And the point that I'm coming in with Devil's Advocate is I agree there is a world in which a banning system would be fucking hype. It would be super cool. It would make the game much more complex. It would make it better and fresh from a viewer, viewer perspective. My biggest stance is that I don't know how you implement it and make it work well. And I think that comes down to what Frito's been saying of, you know, we need to just start testing it. And I think Blizzard should, you know, this tournament upcoming is a good idea. We need to just start testing it because there is always pain points that you're never going to recognize until you get there and seriously start implementing with some of the best teams in the world. Okay, thank you. That's very, very fair. And that brings us nicely to Frito there. Frito, like, obviously we've been kind of alluding to implementation but is that another another point in the hero band discussion where it's not necessarily going to solve every problem known to overwatch but it can alleviate them and it can be iterated on more easily perhaps than without hello guys scb here just want to quickly interrupt this episode of the group Up podcast to say that if you've been enjoying this content then please do consider supporting me directly via patreon it really does help since patreon only takes about 10 percent of your money where youtube and twitch take 40 and 50 percent respectively so it supports me and allows me to keep making videos no matter how many views they do or don't get also if you are really enjoying this discussion then why not consider watching some of my other content first and foremost my twitch stream where this podcast is hosted live and i stream five days a week doing a bunch of other things as well if you're not much of a twitch viewer then you can check out the SVB side channel where all the best bits from the stream go straight to YouTube in highlight format including VOD reviews, gameplay, and streamer formats such as the Fantasy Overwatch or Rank Gauntlet that you may have seen other streamers participate in. And finally, if you're sick of Overwatch, then you could check out my other channel, The Soak, which is where I do movie and TV breakdowns. And I've done videos on things like Avatar The Last Airbender, Pixar's Up, and anime like Haikyuu. So if any of that sounds up your street, then all the links are in the description. But now, back to the discussion. Yes, and to Johnny's points that I, uh, he mentioned earlier, like so, some of the Reddit theories on this is that we will reach a world of um, equal distribution of strategies. And I think we're all coming to agreement that actually it doesn't do that because teams that are good at the meta want to enforce it and will play it. But I think that's actually a defense of the hero band system is that it's even resilient to that. It's not, it isn't random. It isn't hero pools. It isn't RNG. It it's, uh, pushes you towards what you want to play, which is a, a good thing, I think, because teams being able to emphasize their strength and get the competition a little closer is is good. Now, to the degree that that uh, en enables or knocks down competition, I think is uh, yet to be seen. But um, 
like one example of this is uh, for those of you theory crafting at home, thinking about how these metas interact, the, and I've said this uh, story on the show before, but for this episode, we'll repeat it again. But when this was tested previously, um, back in the uh, actual GOATS era, <laughs> every meta has been GOATS since GOATS, but the, the actual GOATS era, there was a tier two tournament with hero bands in it. And some teams did, like we just said, banned uh, in order to play GOATS. And the one hero that you would ban in that era, which was core to the counter comp, as uh, Jake was describing it, was Mercy. Because Mercy enabled the Farah, played with the ball, and, and there's these heroes that are like surprising because um, you might think like, oh, Sojourn or this or that is like key, but we actually have to dig deeper into the, the pieces that like ties it all together oftentimes. Those are usually the anchor pieces that are going to be targeted more because they're core to that comp working in a given meta. And there's usually multiple of these. Like, for example, uh, is Ryan ever playable if Lucio's banned? So like maybe if you ban Lucio, you're banning multiple things at once. And that gets a little scary, actually, because when we start to, it's easy for me to say we should have it and then not have a solution of the uh, format of how this gets picked. But um, there might be way too much weight in a certain role or in a certain, like, as we might imagine, tanks are stronger, but maybe as I'm kind of explaining, maybe supports are actually more essential because they're more unique. Whereas tanks at least have some overlap with their play. There is only one speed guy. There is only one mercy. Um, so that that might end up being something you have to think about when we we come to the uh, implementation mm -hmm. of it. I think I as being like maybe the strongest four on the panel, I'll, I'll go out and say like, I ultimately would push towards the most complexity, I guess. I'm like the anti-Johnny, where Johnny's like, simple, easy, quick, you know, cut, cut, to, cut to the action faster for the broadcast. Uh, me being a nerd, I actually like the long, elaborate Dota drafts of this band's this and this interchange was that, but we also don't have that community or that game. And that's a very, that's a meme Don game, and they like their stuff the way, the way it is over there in their corner. Like, no other esport really works like that. Uh, even the casting in that game is overly nerdy. So I'm biased in the I want maximum complexity. Um, I defer on that opinion to try to meet some middle ground. But like ultimately, I would want a draft. But that's like multiple stages down the line. I, I personally, if I had a vote for something that's like the cleanest, fastest way for us to guarantee diversity and not take up too much broadcast time, I think loser pick one ban is probably the one that I'm most confident in in this exact moment until someone else has a, a genius idea that's more delicate and, and accurate than that. Um, mainly because then you uh, you have the fluidity. You don't have too much um, chaos. Like if you ban four things at once, maybe that's too much. But there's like mo movement and narrative through the series. Um, and also the, the only downside might be like the, the, the comeback mechanics of that. Maybe like you, you start to... Uh, draw empty as the team that's favored to win what you don't want what you don't want i don't know if we actually think this is going to happen but what you don't want is the team that's supposed to be favored to win to like all of a sudden now they the the meta that you create when you ban three things or whatever is ugly and we don't like to see it but the, mm -hmm. the truth is and i think this is part of what johnny was trying to say as well it's the grass ain't always greener on the other side you start banning a couple things the meta you might get might not be better than the five heroes grand finals tournament meta like that that was a skillful meta like say what you want about it like it had a little bit of everything like even with reaper being maybe a sleeper pick it's like tactical hero setup hero overpowered hero carry hero it's like the, the roles of what you want to see in terms of like quintessential overwatch with like it's not like we had roadhog or something like the tank hero was a tank hero you know he did tank things the the carry hit scan hero did the carry hit scan thing and well, although there might not be strategy diversity the quality of the gameplay was as high as it can get essentially we're getting so far into the thing that Frito is now arguing against himself. So I'm going to, I'm going to step in here. He's, he's, giving, <laughs> he's giving counterpoints to himself now. So I'm going to step in here because there's basically two themes that uh, I want to finally discuss on the philosophical end. And then we can get into the nitty gritty of like, seems like Jake has an idea. Frito has an idea of how it would be done. Johnny has an idea of how it would be done. So we can then kind of hash out each other's implementations and then talk ranked. Because I know people in chat have already been coming in, giving their hot takes about how it would work in rank. So the two philosophical things, and, and I want, I want to take it to Jake. One is, does does this this like this kind of dichotomy between competitive integrity and fun, right? It was what Johnny alluded to. It was like, well, it's more fun to see hero bands, but it might hurt competitive integrity. Do you agree with that? Do you think they are oppositional or do you think they can be harmonized? And then second, which we'll talk about, which will be another thing that's universal, is the not enough heroes argument. Because that's kind of what the, the subtext of what was Frito's conversation about supports 
And another frequent anti anti hero ban argument is well we just don't specifically supports we don't have enough. If you ban if you start banning supports, we lose too much essential cogs in the wheel of how Overwatch works, and that would make the game very bland and stale. So I'll let you go first on the competitive integrity versus fun. So first of all, I think the the I have to kind of step back even from that question to like a more macro scope to talk about what like competitive integrity of what. So I think the thing that a, a hero bans that's somehow like choice based, right? I, I think it's very important to differentiate between the hero pool system that's RNG based, where it's like nobody like the all, nobody has any say in it. Like I guess you could like not play the heroes to affect the play rate, to, but it's like you basically have no impact. So realistically, it's not it's not worth it. So basically, you have no choice about hero pools. But hero bans, you have some choice about it. That just becomes the game. So like when the teams are deciding what to ban, whether it's a loser's pick or like both teams do it every map or you do it for the series, that is the game, that there is a ban. And that's just like the game. It's like in, in MOBAs, that is, there is a draft. So if there's a hero that's like Omega broken that everybody first picks all the time, then if you don't have first pick, you ban that hero. You know, like that is the game. And so I think if you're going to, in Overwatch, I think it'd be very different because it's not a, it's not a unique pick system um, with at least under that implementation, if it's not a unique pick. So a ban is just a one ban and that's it. Um, I think the crucial thing is that it will change the way the game is played fundamentally. It'll change the way professional teams practice the game. Because if this is the way the game is, that like teams get a, a hero ban in whatever system we do, then you, you'll be scrimming with the hero ban, right? Like you'll be like, all right, you like, we'll ban this for this map, you'll ban that. That's how teams, everyone will implement the competitive rule set into their practice. Because there's no, like, like, so we talk about, okay, this is the Jotz meta, and this is like the Kiriko, I don't know what the name for it is, but whatever, the Lucio Kiriko, Winston, Reaper, Sojourn meta. I mean, I just call them metas by the five heroes uh, when I think about it. Um, so it's like, in those, there'll be no such thing as like the five hero meta. Like you just, that will go out of our vocabulary because if as long as there's like consistent ban throughout the series, you're going to see like at minimum, at like, I don't know, what's the mathematical minimum is going to be like 10 heroes in the series. And even that is like unrealistically small. It'll probably be like 15 minimum in a series, realistically, maybe, maybe more. And so the idea that there will be a meta that is like these, this is a, a meta that we can have a name for, that's not possible anymore. Because if you're the team who's like worse at this meta, unless you're just two teams who are like, I am better, even though we're losing, we will still win. I'm going to ban other stuff or like not use my ban, whatever, right? Like maybe that could happen, but that will be, I think, very rare, very marginal. Typically teams will have an intuition of like, do we want to play this comp or do we want to ban away from it? Um, and so basically the meta will no longer be like an idea of, okay, this is the meta with the Junker Queen comp and which pieces are we going to take away from this five heroes? It's like teams will be practicing the game with the mindset that they always have to adapt. Like, you'll be in the scrim not knowing what you're going to play that map, and then you'd be like, okay, they banned Winston this map. Uh, okay, let's try, like, a road... You have to, like, make up a new comp. Or, like, not make up a new comp, but maybe you have some concepts of, like, okay, there's, like, a few... We could play a poking style, we could play a rushing style, we could play a diving style. This hero's gone. It's... It, what it does is it, it actually, like, hard nerfs coaches, maybe? Or at least the coach has to, has to have, like... It has to have a good read in like 60 seconds because the coach doesn't get to watch 10 scrims of the same comp and say, okay, the Lucio needs to use his beat. Like, for instance, for like when we're, I was coaching last year, it's like we're like we're watching this Kiriko Lucio meta and I'm figuring, okay, we can never beat into the Kiriko world. It's an absolute grief if you do that. Like, you can't win anyway. So that, but like that innovation helped us win a bunch of matches before everyone like started to also never beat into the Kiriko world. But when we're scrimming, even, even some of the tournament matches, Teams would, like, we would care well, and teams would beat into us. And I'm, like, laughing backstage. I'm like, these guys don't understand the game. They're going to throw for us. Love this. Love this. I'm happy he's beating. He doesn't know what he's doing. But, like, because I figured that out, I'm, like, buffing my team hardcore from us. Like, how we know, because we know exactly how the matchup plays. We know how all the ults interact. So we know, okay, you're going to use this for that. You're going to use it. That is gone. That can't, that just doesn't exist anymore. Can I quickly interject? You're constantly playing new comps. And so the game will just become a game where the players have to make the read and decide how to play for themselves. Can I quickly inject? Could you not argue that as a coach, you might be the first person to realize? Because because the balance, because it's not like it will be in a static game. You know, in MOBAs, the game is a little bit more static. But in Overwatch, we're getting balance patches and heroes all the time. So could it not be argued that you as the coach might be the first person to realize, like, let's say the new support hero comes out and people are like, when we ban him, everyone else thinks, actually, this is the thing to do. But you're the first coach to realize, actually, when you ban that piece, this is the an this is the correct answer. So my players, you should do this when they ban that. I, my, yeah, my I agree. Point I, it comes you, you won't charting, have so. that refined yeah. answer. I, that's my point. You won't. There will be no such thing as like a refined right, yeah. answer because the way you get to this refined answer 
Like in the beginning when there's a new patch, everyone's theory crafting. This looks good. Let's try this. This looks good. Let's try this. But nobody, if you're like smart, nobody actually thinks they like have the read on the meta. Like yeah, that's like crazy hubris. If you actually think that way that like, oh, I, I figured out the meta. It's like, no, you figured out something that seems good, but then maybe there's a counter pick and then there's a counter pick and then there's a counter pick and then there's a counter. Like nobody knows how that, where that path takes you. So trying to thinking you, you like see it all, that's impossible. You just have like some good idea. That's the foundation for building towards. Maybe you understand the next step in the chain. We can beat this, what they're doing with this, but you don't, I mean, maybe you can intuit like one or two more steps, but you don't understand the game is too complex to have like a full read. And so, so at least the, game the current system, we yeah. play the same, if we play the same five heroes mirror matching for like a hundred scrims, we can get a really good read on like how to play. But you'll never have that if you're like playing, if you're changing what heroes you're playing all the time based on what the bands are. The game will not be like, okay, Tracer's gonna be touching car here, my Zen's gonna be here, Winston, you're jumping so, top, yeah. Winston jumps top, this guy swings. Like you don't do that. You just you just like play intuitively with the heroes you have in the moment because you won't be able to get like a hundred reps on Zen in this comp, in this point. You just don't get that anymore. Yeah, so the so game will become much more fluid. Now. Right. So yeah, to summarize, I guess, again, it's like the game, the fundamental how the game operates at the pro level change. I think I want to let Custa interject because I feel like he's got some thoughts here. But at the pro level, Me what too. you're saying is right now, it's again, you too, John. Yeah, you I'll guys raise your, hands to, raise your hands if you've got something to say because I don't know who's molding <laughs> secretly who's like, oh, let me jump in. <laughs> But like, so at the pro level right now, we're, you're saying it's very coach. It's very much like, okay, we scrim, we scrim, we scrim, and we perfect and we hone and we know exactly what to do. But when you start, you know, w w once you add hero bands, that goes away forever to a point where now the game becomes about like theory crafting a lot more and intuitive gameplay of the player having to realize that, okay, we didn't get 100 games in on practicing this particular ban and this particular five man comp. So we're going to have to wing it a little bit. So the fundamental nature of how pro play operates will change forever, basically, is what you're saying. Is that correct? Can I? Uh, sorry, I was muted when I said. Can I ask a question to elaborate on everything you just said? The, like, I think we we see this happen on new patches where everything Jake's saying, the meta theory crafting of, well, let's try a pick, but then it gets countered. Like week to week, whenever a patch is freshest, then we do see the pros do that in their matches. Whereas if they are given enough time, that's happen that's happening behind the scenes. So what a band system in theory would do is make that happen almost every match. And I suppose my question is. What gameplay do we think is better for the game, the viewers, the fun factor, and any other metric you want? So, right. Uh, so this comes back question. to that. Yeah, this comes back again to the discussion of like fun versus potential competitive integrity, whatever we each define that to be. I'm gonna like take it to Custa then Johnny. So Custa, any thoughts on what's been discussed there about sort of fundamentally changing the pro level? Yeah, and I, I think in just this most recent playoffs, there was a great example of this. Of even at the base level of where we are now. Uh, Soul Dynasty, a great team with great players in the grand finals, were believed that Roadhog was a better ca better pick, and it took a lot of scrims of them having success. And they've actually come out; multiple teams have come out and said we had tons of success, we were dominating, and then we scrimmed against Dallas, <laughs> and Dallas showed that this comp is better, which was the Winston Lucio Kiriko shit that Dallas invented and made everyone else play. If you add the depth of now in every single scrim, on every single map that you play, you are now banning a new hero. You are adding a ridiculous number of variables that is going to make it the difference between team, teams' uh, practice and the value of it much more difficult. Which, as you said, can be interesting because the best teams will be the ones that can implement and uh, adapt on the fly and learn quickly from that kind of practice, which you know, to Frito's point, could be more interesting for the game, but I don't know if that is true. It might just have that issue, and this is where I, my pain point that I want to keep hitting home of, it could just make competitive worse, because it could just become a crapshoot and a lot more RNG. And as a whole of the competitive league, if you're going to implement a ban system, that would fundamentally change how Overwatch League teams build rosters. Because right now, a lot of people have a lot of specialists, a lot of players that they, you know, pieces that they can sub in here. You would want the five players that you think can adapt on the fly, can play the most things, and can adjust their style at any moment. Yeah, I agree. There's no need for subs, actually. Like, yeah. you yeah. will have five player rosters, maybe six if somebody's sick. Like, that's actually will be the competitive mentality. Right. So but I think it already is, but that's a sign. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I appreciate that. Johnny, you had something you weren't in jack with. Yeah. So. This is actually like backs up my argument. That is that like I think that one ban per series would be better because I feel like you guys are pigeonholing yourself into this framework where like 
oh, it's too complicated. There's too many bands, every map, and like the it's gonna be all over the place, and like you have to think about every map because of every band in the game, and you have to think about subs, and the coach is not gonna have time to prepare. But I think that that is like it's too complicated. I agree with you guys. Banning once every map, it is insane. It's it's ludicrous. It just wouldn't work. It'd be awful. But one per series, I think that still gives teams opportunity to prepare accordingly and still go into a series with a, like an idea, at least like a bit of a flow charty thing. We're like, hey, if they ban Winston, we're going to commit to playing Reinhardt compositions. And that what we'll do for the rest of the series. You know, we'll see where the maps goes. But like you have that, you have an opportunity to prepare accordingly. And so I don't think, I don't believe Jake's argument that if you implemented, um, or well, you know, if you implemented it once per map, then yeah, I could see you moving into territory where it's like you're just you know, s- scrambling the hero pool and you're just like, well, I, you know, play up, play, play something and we'll figure it out on, on the fly, this map. But I think if you banned once per series, I think that then that would give teams opportunity to have, to have backup compositions. And that would be a more structured way of approaching bands rather than all over the place. So I Can actually I liked it. Yeah. I want to I, I question you on this because if you had one band in the series, would you be worried that off the beginning of the series, after the first map, one team who had banned something is just in trouble because the thing that they banned would give them the advantage. You are just going to roll out that. The, the rest of the series plays out the exact same way. And I think one of the things that Frito likes about hero bands is that the series will change based on your decisions going into each map. Can you give, give an example of that? Perhaps? Oh, so let's know? say we're going into Joe's meta and we ban, uh, we decide not to ban Junker Queen because we think we're better than them. Both teams decide not to ban Junker Queen and then one team just loses at it. That series doesn't change throughout the, the series and it sort of takes away what I think the value of hero bans is bringing, that it changes the game as you keep playing. Ban better, like ban Junker Queen. <laughs> if you like, yeah. if if Can't you get... don't if you don't ban Junker Queen in a Jotes meta because you believe you are better, then you're just the worst team and you lost fair and square because you didn't ban Junker Queen. If you suck at Jotes in a Junker Queen meta, you just ban Junker Queen because you recognize that Junker Queen is like is going to give us a worse chance at winning this series. So I I don't completely. Two teams are always your... going to think they're better at Junker Queen. You never go into a series like two like. Oh, fuck, no, no. Two good sometimes teams you go to a series it. knowing you're worse. Than yeah, them. oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. If you're so, if you're Jake's fucking the gladiators, right? Was, you're I... not going up against the Dallas Fuel, being like, let's play jokes, guys. But like, there are teams that are going to go into a series head to head, thinking that you are equivalent or better at this team, and you will just jo- dodge that. Uh, so that's just Overwatch now. Like, yeah, which, the, the which you lose nothing. Just, yeah, you lose nothing. It does still point. create variability across, like across, like a day, a week, a month of Overwatch, mm. right? Like, sure, in the match, this is a match where we're gonna both play the Junker Queen comp because we both believe in ourselves. Okay, cool. Like, I don't never want to see that. I think it's more like on day fifty. Like, I have only seen this for like months, and now I now I don't want to. Now I don't want to see it. And so maybe it does alleviate that feeling of like as a viewer the staleness of like every single match is like this i think it gets it could be a little weird of well it's fine it's fine i was thinking of like you in the tournament you're like this team played this comp the whole time why are they not playing anymore but i guess you know you can play okay this hero's banned but i think as an addendum to your idea giants which i thought was funny because i think your idea just can't happen as long as it's possible to ban the new hero that blizzard just released it's like we'll never ever like it does we shouldn't discuss it because it's impossible to be implemented (laughs) from like a like activision's share price you know what i mean like like right it's such a counter argument that i'm like laughing i'm like yeah yeah, we're screwed he knows it that's why i don't criticize it yeah can i say like i think it's a good idea but it can't happen but what if you had some kind of you if you're gonna do it just once in the series maybe it's okay to have a protect before the ban and even a blizzard golden protect on the new hero. <laughs> Bobby you know, Kotick I mean, protects. I mean, Bobby Kotick protects. I'm watching my hero system. Bobby so, Kotick no, no, protects. I mean, I mean yeah. it, like, this, this system you're suggesting, no matter how good or bad it is, it's irrelevant because it can't happen. As long as it's possible for me to say, here go, the new hero that's on all the advertising. No, I don't want to have her in the game. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, that's not going to happen, right. guys. Like, welcome to the real world. So, right. so I think that's I, some I, way to SUV. prevent yeah, Kirko go ahead, from being banned if you're going to do that. Yeah, so I'm ex- I'm explaining my my own my own death sentence here because yeah, to just clarify what Jake said as well, it's essentially like, guys, what is the most fun time in Overwatch? It's when a new hero released. Let's introduce yeah. a hero ban system and ban the new hero. Great job, guys. 
game yeah. is way less fun now. And this is and this is true as well. Even even without Overwatch, we know like in every esport this happens. Like when a new thing comes out and you give people the chance to ban it, they will ban it. So like even if the pro, yeah. it, it won't even be re- necessarily so, relevant to their strength of the hero. They will just be like, I haven't scrimmed Kiriko. Fuck that hero. Like I'm not giving anyone else the chance to potentially figure it out. Right? Like it's, it's in in StarCraft when you when you implement a new map pool, people always ban the new map. They're like, fuck that. I don't want to play that. I've not practiced that, so I'm not gonna let anyone exactly. else. Exactly. So going back to Frida's argument. Sorry, Frida. I know we want to talk, but going back to your argument, what you said earlier, it's just like, well, the playoffs kind of sucked because it was just Sojourn and Kira. Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> just stop yeah. with those words Sorry. Sorry. So some Sorry. casual viewers were confused why there wasn't more than five heroes. I thought the playoffs yes. were awesome, but okay. Keep Sorry. Going. Yeah. Sorry to put words in your mouth. I, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I apologize. But Sorry. yes, a lot of people thought that the playoffs meta sucked because it was just five heroes. I think it would suck even more if we didn't see any Kiriko because teams just like banned it like most of the time. And that's yeah, why so you have can't have hero bans. You have to protect the new hero in, in can your I, system. Yeah. Can I jump in right now? Yeah, There's go ahead, Frida. A whole lot of things were laid down. So I, I, I don't think any viewer would actually scoff at a golden protect or a blue shell protect or whatever you want to call it. I, I think, think everyone would get it. I think... Yeah, I think as a casual fan, it's like, I, I think it's like, well, th- this is the new hero. Yeah, they're not on the table to be removed. That, I don't think anyone would care about that. Or at least like for a map or something. Like Except maybe they get banned Joe's later meta. in the series. Uh, and the new hero is the problem. Well, well, well but they, could, if they can ban something. <laughs> if you ban Lucio, if you ban Brig, right. like, it's got to be something like, else. People you can ban. weren't one tricking this comp until they realized the full nature of it, right? Like, okay, fair even enough. like you ban, you ban, you know, like, like I think. There's certainly like some hero like that that even if that meta is so dominant, maybe it gets played on three out of five maps. But there's at least like if you ban, I think Lucio for sure, you'll no longer play this comp if Lucio's gone. Like, All right, 100%. Yeah. So there's like but at even least so... gonna be one map you can nuke the hero out of the series. Like there's never a hero in my experience that's so broke. Like if even if you have Kyrgyz all the time, you're not gonna you're not gonna one trick this exact combo time. If you ban Lucio, you're not gonna play Reaper anymore. You know, you're probably also, not gonna play Winston also, I think the, so. the ultimate part of that that doesn't bring us any worse than like it would have been without the bans. Like that that comp would still be horrific. If that comp was so horrific, then we wouldn't be worse off than with the ban, surely. So, yeah, uh, I'll take it to Frito. Yes, I think that all, everything we we're talking about here gets into the nitty gritty of uh, the format decisions. And so there's a point custom made, and as well as this point right here. This is why I want more depth to it than being too simplistic. That's one fear I have. If it's too simplistic, then it's just like the same game with a very slight amount of variation sometimes in the tournament. Like, I don't want that. I want it to be a bit more transformative and a bit more powerful to have some effect. And to Custa's point of like, we screamed Roadhog on a patch and it turned out to be bad. I actually think that goes the other way where that is a knock against the current system, not against the hero band system. Because if Soul all of a sudden learned that their weeks of practice were for naught on a bad cup, they could say, oh, we'll ban Winston now. Oh, thanks. Oh, we can play Hog now? Oh, great. Now we're back in the game. As opposed to reading the meta wrong and being stuck on that patch and on that meta for the rest of the tournament and just be out of it completely. Another example that uh, breaks my heart is the many times that Philly Fusion has had a dominant season and then get to the postseason patch and not be relevant all of a sudden because their heroes aren't relevant. Um, I I think it was Alarms last season, rest in peace, that uh, they they won the season, right? I believe over, over the shock even with more wins in the regular season. And then they bombed out of the hog sniper meta if i if i'm recalling all this information correctly but they they then in the same way uh, as soul came to the realization very quickly sort of like you're saying with the one band thing this is why i don't think it could be one band because someone can win the draft in one band because they go into it thinking one thing then immediately realize oh no we were wrong and we see this in series all the time in the league too where a team prepped one way shows up on the day and they're on the first team fight sometimes you could tell that they're just blown out they don't understand how to use some rotation of something and it's just going to go bad until they get to practice for the next two weeks and figure it out uh what what a map to map ban or more or at least a little bit more depth than a, a simple system would do is that a buffer to like s- slow down the winning team to say what is the winning team got next in their pocket like they're going to have to go to their next strategy and i would argue the best teams, the ones that, like, let's say uh, the Gladiators from this past season is a great example of this. They Gladiators seem to almost, like, buffer their peak a little bit in many cases, and they famously were weak in the Jotes meta, I think, maybe because they tried to learn more comps, right? But in this kind of system, the team that has more preparation and at least is, like, above average or good on a variety of comps will be buffered in this situation. Whereas if you lucked out, and we've seen teams uh do this let's say maybe when uh 
in that very same um, Roadhog sniper meta, London, was it London or Soul? I can't remember. Profit, Profit and Gesture. It was Gesture's final run playing Hog, which it was Soul, right? I was on Soul, yeah. Right. So th they had like a meh season, kind of. And then all of a sudden it's like, playoff profits back. We got a good patch. Gesture's popping off. That, that to me anyway, actually is the other thing. It's it, that, that to me is not very competitive, like uh, has good competitive integrity because that's a team that just lucked into it. And we see that happen. I wouldn't say a lot, but more than I would like. Where no, that, that's just Overwatch, man. Like there's so much patch RNG. Like if you just get oh, new. We've been complaining like, about you, this since 2016. If you win the last stage before <laughs> playoffs, it's like unlucky. It sucks to be you because your heroes are about to get nerfed to the ground, and and it's the teams who like struggle in the last patch before playoffs who, on average, are going to get like more buffs to their players or their heroes. So that yes, is, and I, I think a ban system fights against yeah, that it, more than yeah, we already have. It, actually. So our current our current system is quite RNG. Actually, is what I'm yeah. trying to say. And we, and we got insanely good RNG for playoffs, even though Dante had to play Winston. I think we had the best Reaper in the league. I think like. If we had played like a more normal patch where it's like hard tracer focus, it would have been really hard for us. And that we get good RNG. But we're good at rush comps, we're good at team play, we're good at like we're really good at the Junker Queen comp. You know, so we had this like some fundamentals that carried into the playoffs. But that's every season, every single team is like hard RNG'd by patches. That that is like already the current system. So I think you yeah. make a good point that like we can't just attack it another implementation or a, a possible idea without criticizing okay in the current status quo there's flaws which is that the patch rng destroys teams and, or or saves teams i mean that's currently how the system is like even up to last season where it's like okay it's a patch where even london doesn't play ryan anymore okay well they're screwed you know mm -hmm. like like i mean they did pretty well despite but but maybe it was a decent patch for them because at least they got to play a lucio comp and they were good at like the the team play in that comp the same way we were good from the junker queen comp you know like yeah but the rng I, is super impactful there i just don't know which way it swings you have to be inside the team to know but yeah and again i think i think any even, even advocate of hero bands would say it's not it's not the per it's not going to create a utopia of overwatch it's just again mm -hmm. trying to find the alleviations of some of the pain point or the some more extreme pain points of playing overwatch and and while we're focused on pro level uh, let's let's round it off now because we've had a lot of interesting ideas thrown about. What I want to do is, I'll, I'll let Frito, Jake, and Reinforce because they've all given a proposition of like a potential hero band system. I'll let you guys now, having heard each other's opinions a little bit, summarize your like. I think if we were to add hero bands in or watch league, I think this is the best way, and these are the reasons why. And you can feel free to you know do an M and M and kind of pre roast the other guy's suggestion if you want. I'll let you do that however you feel, and then Custa. I'll let you finally feed back and say if you kind of agree with any of them, disagree with any of them. I'm just like, okay, I can I can get with that, or I oh, I think all of them are garbage. I'll still they, should all, they should yeah, all uh, they should all retire right now. Okay, so <laughs> we'll start with Johnny. I think Johnny hasn't spoken for a while. So Johnny, your system, and why is it the best? Yeah, I mean, I I think I made I, my 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 system. Uh, pretty clear. I'll I'll add. I'll Wait, steal. Wait, you mean Jake's... the one that's impossible, or like? Oh, yeah, I'll I'll steal think, Jake's I homework. I'm I stealing think... Jake's homework with the golden protect. I'm adding yeah, yeah, it okay. to my homework. I was wanted to say so to clarify as well. I think I think it should be important to clarify. Like you should try and suggest a system that is feasibly like realistic. And if you're like, oh, okay, you know, Blizzard would do this, then you gotta you gotta answer that complaint beforehand. So it's gotta be realistic. Um, and yeah, it's gotta you know, maybe Golden try and explain. Really does solve that issue with the mm -hmm. system. You just have the new hero not get banned. Like, just there was I have a last. Uh, no, no, I have a question. Is this a system that would be implementable uh, in Overwatch League and the main live service game, or are we we're, just we're gonna leave that out? We're gonna leave that out for now. We'll just talk because I don't think they have to be the same. I don't think they would have okay. to be the same. So I think we can separate those. So. Yeah, so well, a ranked game is one game and it's an Overwatch League. Yeah, yeah so I'm it wouldn't even. Sure, yeah. There's yeah, always so, going to be some difference, right? So, Johnny, like, so you, you want to go ahead and again, you, you might, this is your only chance to summarize. So, you know, forever right. now, people will refer to this as the Johnny solution to the hero ban problem. So, <laughs> make, sure when you, make sure when you attach your name to that, you've, you've, you've kind of gotten all this the kinks the world, ironed out. Johnny. So, go oh, ahead yeah. oh, yeah. and addre address right. any potential complaints. And also, like, the, let's, let's answer as well the whole fun versus competitive integrity. Like, I want to see fun in the game. So, that's why all right so I'll, I'll start off by explaining it like this all right to 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 uh sort of comment on what frida said about complexity and you know with people seeing teams you know banning each map and you know it makes the game more complicated before i was a pro player i worked in a production room for a dota 2 qualifier the international qualifier it was like a hub and it was like EU teams playing, and it was like, you know, the qualifiers or whatever. 
I also was a Heroes of the Storm observer. During the pick ban phase, holy fuck, bro, I can't wait to go to sleep. That shit is the most boring fucking thing I've ever experienced in esports, bro. We're sitting in front of a main menu screen, just like selecting and banning heroes. And people, people in the crowd are like snoozing. They're like going to take a piss and buying hot dogs. Like, Jesus, it's so lame. I'm sorry, bro. Look, I know, I know it's interesting. I know that there are literally content creators who just like make a reputation by making League of Legends draft videos. But look, they're not the popular kid in school. And we, we need more entertainment than more popular kids <laughs> watching our game, all right? I don't know. That was rude. Um, so I just want the least amount of stress and time possible another thing that's really fucking annoying and if you want to have a suggestion for another topic to discuss SUV, how about no subs in the overwatch league i'll tease that one for you all right because teams take so long to submit substitutions and they're like uh hold on we're having a team meeting you know player had to go you know pee or something again like five minutes and the, the team please submit your substitution if we had to do a ban for every single time we have to go into a map, the team's going to be like, well, first of all, what map is it? Loser's pick? Okay, what map is the loser going to pick? Okay. Then the, another team has to select a ban. So now we're waiting for more Slack communication. Like, there's no way to, like, speed up the system. And we'll just have, like, ad breaks and Costa, like, juggling on stream to entertain the viewers. Like, it'll be so Resident Sleeper, bro. It's unbelievable. So I just want a ban at the start of the series because what I don't want to do I don't want to change the way Overwatch is being played. I don't want to change what teams are the best at Overwatch, what teams are the worst at Overwatch. I don't want to give teams some like extra bonus chance at winning a series because they get the opportunity to ban the good teams or, you know, I don't want the great teams to, you know, make them even better by removing hero. I just want more variety, all right? And if I get to ban one hero that I've seen for the past 12 series, as a, you know, the viewers are going to be like, rejoice, like, finally, we're not seeing the same meta all the time. An opportunity for the teams to mix it up and force them out. And it's not going to hurt competitive integrity to just have one ban per series. It's easy. It doesn't change the way Overwatch is played. It doesn't change the strength of the teams. It just is a small little bonus thing that makes the matches more entertaining and, you know, Overwatch League a little bit more variety spiced. So... That's that's the Johnny solution right there. I like it. The Johnny solution is the humble one. It's like, here's a little small change, guys. It makes life better. It doesn't cause too many problems. A small. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And somewhere, Bobby Cardick's rubbing his hands when you were like, more room for ads. There's going to be lots more ads. And we know Bobby's... <laughs> Bro, Bobby, we tried first. ads between the breaks in maps. We tried ads in halftime. Dude, VCT is doing it right now. They go back to like the desk in the middle of the mask. Why Dude, are you they, doing it this? For, it sucks. It took like 30 seconds. It's crazy, it's yeah. It's awful. Just keep playing the game. Like, what are we doing? It's an it's it's such a bad... Break sucks. Just the more gameplay as possible. So, yeah. And then, of course, you know, the goal and protect. You know, can't buy, mm -hmm. can't ban new heroes. There you go. Mm -hmm. This would have been a great time for me. I should hit the button on my, sound, uh, my uh, stream deck that starts an ad on Twitch. This would have been peak time to do that right now but i want to take it ideas. <laughs> yeah i want to take it to uh jake now jake uh your idea and any questions you have about like or any roasts you have for johnny's system or okay. free roast so, for fritos no. first i'll do i'll roast johnny's system since we were just talking about it first or just provide a criticism of it the the major criticism i have there's two the number one criticism i have is lucio i think lucio is literally the only one hero in the game that like makes ban system screwed up. Like you need a new AOE speed hero or some kind of like support hero that like gives mobility to your team. Like it, it honestly, like it has to be another hero with like some way to do a speed boost. He doesn't have to be an AOE healer. It could be like a different type of healer, be, or maybe it's a DPS hero. I don't know. It's kind of a broken skill to have on DPS. Probably doesn't exist. But I think that skill, if you ban Lucio, like if you ban Lucio the whole series. Like the game is actually kind of ruined. Like, like there's too many cons. You play Lucio and dive. You play Lucio in like a rush comp. Like you can literally hard block Zen Bab Sigma if you if you cut Lucio. Like go like, to protect Lucio. No, but so that's like <laughs> no. So, maybe you could, right? It, like I, unironically, I think it makes more sense if it's like a new hero to be gold protected. But like okay. Lucio is the one. I think every other hero actually does have some kind of replacement. Like Winston, Doom Ball. You know, there's like Sigma, but now there's also Ramatra and like Diva could work in some spot. Like tanks, I actually think it's fine. I think the tanks are like replaceable with one another, close enough, not like 
completely change the game. I think Lucio is like the one hero, which is like, you play a sniper comp and we don't want to play a sniper comp. We must play Lucio. Like there is no other choice besides Lucio. So that is the one hero that I think is a fly in the ointment for the ban of the whole series. Cause like, yeah. If, like if, every if they were to they add, play, half if the they teams were... in the league, I ban Lucio, you know? If they were to add such a hero, would you then be okay with Johnny's idea? Yes, yes, yes. Actually, okay. I think Lucio... I mean, maybe I'm missing one, but I think Lucio is the one that, like, sticks up. It's like, this is going to ruin the game if you, like, just ban Lucio forever. That's, like, banning half the roster. You know, yeah, like, it it's, is. like, I think there's some here, like, Mercy, you could say, like, the example from Goats. That might have been true in, like, the Goats meta that Mercy is so critical. But now there's Kiriko. I think Kiriko will replace Mercy, like, in that comp. Like, it's, like, a no-aiming healer where you can heal flyers consistently. But then you, yeah. So, like, basically, I think Mercy's replaceable. Well, maybe she wasn't back right. then for that. So, so, so we roasted Lucio's Johnny. not replaceable. Lucio needs some kind of protect or a second hero that, like, is similar to Lucio or somehow makes it less game okay. running. To so, we, so we roasted Lucio. We roasted Johnny, rather, so not that's Lucio. that's the so, issue with Johnny's okay, system. So but otherwise, I like Johnny's system. I think, I think his... his like positives to it are valid that like just getting it done at the start of the series is good um yeah i think you could also do like you could you could do a golden protect and then if you're only the one time in the whole series you could do like each team gets a protect and then you get the bands whatever you, you, you have a little more latitude if you did it literally only once at the beginning the teams hash it out and then we just say oh hey look here's how it went this team protected this this team protected this these are the bands okay we're playing but here's the series let's go and we don't talk about it again it's just established that that's the way the series is going to go and it creates fire so i actually like johnny's suggestion i think the lucio is just the issue there because it's not a new hero but it does ruin the game if it's banned or significantly screw up the game um my system that i would be interested in is the just like system. let's go one level up of complexity on what johnny's saying and do it every single map instead of once in the series so i i think you can get rid of the golden protect stuff because it's not that big of a deal if we miss Kiriko one map or maybe two maps. Probably only one map because probably the team who likes playing Kiriko is not banning it. Um, but who knows? At, let's assume there's just like some hatred for Kiriko. And then so at, at maximum, you're going to not see her on two maps. Maybe that's too much, you know, whatever. Maybe you could keep the goal to protect on the new hero. But still, I think my system would be, to clarify, you do a new ban every map and you can't ban the same hero twice if it's your ban. So I can't... The other thing that would prevent is like, oh, you've got like you know, like Ans on your team or whatever to like, okay, Widow's just banned this series. Have fun, Ans. You never play Widow again in the Overwatch League. Every single team's going to ban Widow. Like, if you're like the undisputed best player, like Fearless, okay, Winston's banned this series. You're the best Winston player in the world. You never play Winston again in the Overwatch League. Like, that's kind of screwed up in my opinion. Like, that is like a big problem, you know? Like, if you're if you're like, the, there are players out there that's like their player-hero combination is like undisputed like sickle mode, everyone is scared of them. Like that is fearless. I, so I this is actually a second like, roast of Johnny's system. I should add. This is actually yeah, a second. It is, it is. So to be fair, but that's so yeah. It, but in the end, right, it's a like comparison with my system too. So I would, I would, my system prevents that from happening as well. So because you have to, you you're maxed out on two maps where you don't have the hero, gotcha. and if it's a hero that only you you want to play and the other team wants to ban, then you're gonna play it on four or five maps. You know, so it's like you really you could limit you, it like hurts fearless to have to play on a map where he wants to play Winston, but he can't. And then, but like you only get that for one map, and then he's gonna play Winston the rest of the series if it's good. And like you have to be able to answer it. You can't just say we'll not deal with this. Like we'll we'll just never play against your Winston. You know, like that I think, or like Hottie, you'll just never play against your Ryan Hottie. Like how you like that? You know, you you your your favorite hero, you never play it again. So if you're right. the best player on your on if you're like a special specialty player and you're really good, you'll just never play your specialty hero again. And I think that's like that's like competitively, that's what I would do. If I was the coach and I was doing the bands and I go against Fearless, I ban Winston every single game. I never play against Fearless Winston. I, you know, I go against Hottie, okay, right. I ban Ryan or whatever, right? I like or maybe I ban Lucio against Hottie, so you can't play Ryan either. You know, whatever. So like there's ways to ruin the game and you prevent that by right. new ban every map and also doing the bands blind. And I think you do the bans with roster submission full blind. So it's like you don't get to um, – there's no, like, phase where you have to, like, get information back and forth. You're right. It does add complexity when there's a loser map pick because you have to hear the loser map pick, and then you do the ban. But I think that's already in, like, a playoff series. We only do loser map pick in, like, these rare series. So it's more okay for there to be, like, more drama between the maps and more suspense, and, like, slowing it down because it's, like, a big series for, like, high high consequence. It's only playoffs. So the most of the season is going to be, like, hey, you know, like, preset maps. So you already, like, have a, have a more clear idea of what you're going to do going into the series. You don't know what the other team is banning, so there's right. nothing to react to. You know you're going to Dorado. It's, like... I mean, you could try to guess what they're going to ban and then mind game counterban. But realistically, I think 
that'd be very hard to do because both teams are mind gaming each other. You probably just right. ban something you don't want to deal with. Um, so I just want to just want to speed you up a little bit. So any other points you want to add to defend your system before we open it up to criticism? Uh, I think that's it. Just new one hero ban per team, blind, new one every map. You can't ban the same hero twice. Okay. I, I like how this is going because we had Johnny's like, Johnny's like, I got a humble suggestion here. One ban, let's go. My, mine's one Jake's level one of, step up. of egotism. Of like, okay, well, how from, about... How from about, the humble Johnny system. Yeah, from the humble Johnny, there's the uh, ambitious Jake. And then they'll, I'm sure in a moment we'll hear Madcap Frida, who's just like, go all the way. Because jo Johnny's system is like, okay, to start Trump summarize, Johnny's system is like, this is the simplest. It comes from a sort of production POV world as well, where it's like, this is quick, it's easy. We don't have to worry about how annoying players are with giving us the, you know, their, what they're doing. We get it done. Jake's like, well, yeah, all right, homie. But then, you know, there's some flaws in this. There's the Lucio flaw. There's the best hero in the world, best player in the world at this hero flaw. I think for those reasons, we switch it up per map. Okay, we get a bit more production time. Okay, we have a few more ads here or there. But overall, it's worth it for what the outcome is. The outcome is worth that little bit of extra investment. I'm going to quickly give Custa a chance. If you want to poke any holes here, Custa, in anything that we've heard before we hear Frito's system. Uh, the only one that I can really see with the with the Jake system of like people submitting the bands with the map and like the rosters and stuff like that is, I think the order in which that happens is important of like let's say we're going to havana right and you want to put arms in but you don't know if the other team's going to ban the Widowmaker. are we having that as like a you're rolling the dice of if we put arms in and they ban Widowmaker, then you just have to deal with that like it, yes, is, yeah, if that's important system, yeah. like in my that... system the players who are one tricks are like it's dead you can't be a one trick anymore okay because so you're it... gonna get banned out like like just because you have arms on your team i might just ban widow you like you'll never put ons in the roster or like i mean on's a bad example because he can play ash he's like actually really good at some other heroes too yeah, yeah i'm trying to think cool. of like a true one trick player there's not really many left in the overwatch we're back so in the era where chips are now gone. let's go yeah, yeah okay so we're all banning doomfist permanently get out of here yeah. chips up but so if, like, you're, oh. if you're a one trick player you're done in the overwatch league that's yeah. like I, I accept that in the system but i think yeah. that like almost doesn't exist anymore in the overwatch league. i agree like, yeah. i, I think... think of any examples anymore so i think as the game has become more competitive that is already we're not going to throw shade on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. no. Everyone's Nobody gets a great talent except player for here. Chipsa. Sorry, um, Chipsa. Uh, the <laughs> the other thing I wanted to talk about is like I think what Johnny has said, and obviously this is something that I agree with only over the last couple of years. Now that we're on broadcast, more of the streamlining of the process of getting from map to map is incredibly important. It's one of the reasons that the Overwatch League has changed the format of why we don't have a halftime. And like, obviously we got less airtime because of that, but it made the game a lot more fluent. And one of the reasons that was decided is viewership drops. As soon as you go to any form of break, any form of different segment, you will lose viewers. And esports as a whole has not just Overwatch League, a lot of other esports are trying to streamline this process because the quicker you get into the action, the more people are going to watch. So if this bear, as long as the band system doesn't, add extra layers to that i agree that i think it's fine and you know i i like your systems i think they're interesting um i i would love to see how jake's system works i like jake's system more than johnny sorry johnny i think you're not you're not cooking enough for my liking i want if we're gonna go i want to do it's it it's a moose boosh before the series bro it's yeah. <laughs> it be your own it's a little it be your own yeah, it be your own it's a little nibble at least give him an entree come on yeah man. yeah yeah oh, i want something man. bigger i want more i want i want carbs i want breadsticks johnny and I, that's why i like jake's uh jake's point right so I, sticks, baby. my system yeah. is rechristened to the breadstick system <laughs> I, I agree as well that the lucio is the biggest problem right now like i've talked about what the hero roster i don't have a number of what the hero roster needs to be and like the flexibility but i think in the dps and with only one tank we're pretty much there as jake said things can be replaceable supports is where the biggest holes lie of like if you take one out that drastically changes the number of compositions that you can eff effectively play um honest, and that's sort of where i'm at it is is there any other hero you can think of Scott, besides Lucio? I think Lucio is the only uh, one. Like, because it used to be like, you know, Baptiste used to do a lot of heals and he had the immortality, but now Kiriko does. I, I, I actually Kiriko, think it is. There's Moira, there's Ana. There's a lot of like yeah. high throughput heroes. Yeah, I, I think you'd be fine. I think supports would be fine in a hero band system other than Lucio. Yeah. So what you're saying is we need to go to one support. That's is that is that correct, Custer? You're saying one two Fuck one. Fuck no! That... I'm stressed enough with <laughs> the two supports. <laughs> okay, so okay, we've had the two suggestions now. One I'm going to take it. We had we had the uh, the Johnny's charcuterie board there, just nibbling a little bit on the cheese. Jake presented perhaps a little bit more of a main course. I think Frida, have you got a three course meal for us? Well. It in five years time when we have enough heroes that we're all we're definitely ready for a draft mode I, i'd love to have that conversation down the line but i'll, I'll just 
take one more <laughs> so, <laughs> gradual, reasonable that- step forward, maybe uh, beyond what Jake proposed and say maybe like if I like the loser picks one band, maybe the winning team also gets to add a protect. So then you get past the point of like feeling that a specific uh, thing is going to be hit forever. Now, I, I don't know about the like you can't ban the same thing twice thing because then I feel like the majority of a series can still be dominated by let's say jotes or whatever and then you get like a reprieve from it from a map or so like so that so i don't know how i feel about that i i i don't know if i think they should be cumulative over time because like what i just described let's say like the the losing the bands increase over time um but also the protects do as well so like let's say let me flesh it out from the beginning maybe for example, and there's a few ways I could see this working. I like the Apex system too, but I'll, I'll, I'll describe that separately. Maybe both teams puts up a protect at the start of the series before we even ban anything. Play out the first map, see what happens. Loser picks one ban and the winning team gets to protect one thing. And so there's an order to that. So like if you are ons and you just dominated on map one and they're like, oh, we don't want to play against Widow anymore. Maybe you just go ahead and protect that. So, so the losing team then can still target that comp so we don't get in the Soul Dynasty situation of, oops, we scrimmed the wrong thing for two weeks or whatever it was in time for this tournament match. They at least can like try, like maybe let's translate it into that. Like like re- you can protect Winston for Fearless, but maybe we go at that comp in another another spot where you 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 they'll have a chance at least to ban into that. So if you think that's Lucio, if you think that's your, and, and I guess my Christmas as well, I don't know if it's optimal ban strategy to target Widow because it's kind of like what we're saying. It's like, if the bands are limited, I think usually you'll probably want to attack the cornerstone of the comp, but that that becomes easier when it's like Violet on uh, Zenyatta or Fearless on Winston. I think I think those cases are outliers. I think most of the time you'll try to target the comp that your team struggles to either play or beat. Um, alternatively, there's the max complex system, which is the apex system, which is lots of bands at the start. And it alleviates over time, map to map. So therefore, you get to submit a bunch of bands, and it's a more elaborate break period. But once the series starts, it's it's going, and there's no breaks on it. And and you at least know, like each segment of bands will lift each map. So there's no dis- deciding break time pause in between the maps. But I am fine with the uh, winner protects one, loser bans one, because I think it's delicate enough. And mainly what I'm trying to do is uh, gain the diversity of strategy and gameplay and expression of those teams, especially bubble teams, which otherwise sometimes get blown out in the meta if they either don't have the right pieces to compete or um, read the meta wrong or all these other things. Like at least to have a chance to like stabilize in a series and give us a watchable game because sometimes the gaps between teams, because like if, 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 we purely want the best team to win. Well, sometimes then the best team will win every team fight, like always. And right. to some degree, that's okay because, well, like in boxing or something, it's like, well, he's just physically can't lose to anyone and we're just okay with that. But that, that's not the type of game I think we have or the um, game the viewers want to see, especially when it's very meta restrictive and we're forced to see teams we love and maybe have watched through a whole season play a comp that they aren't good at, doesn't express their strong points, doesn't allow them to... Uh, um, be unique, and I think it offers a lot for casters and broadcast to create a narrative for teams. Because let's say, well, you know, we can talk about the protect of Dallas, like fearless, duh, <laughs> like MVP fearless, like we can say that. Of course, they're going to protect that. All right, now how are they going to go at this? And then there's the ban, and it's like I don't know. I right. see I see that happening over the course of two minutes uh, max. But maybe that already is uh, causing right. Johnny to like well, we'll let, <laughs> fall we'll asleep let, uh, at the wheel. <laughs> we'll let the production crew come in. I just want two little quick points of clarification. Firstly, you know, you mentioned Apex. Just for any viewer who's confused, we're not talking Apex Legends, FYI. We're talking Apex the Overwatch tournament. So just in case anyone's like Apex, of course. Apex fans. So just there's there's some Zoomers out well, there. Right? I was they're, confused they're, off the they're when just you watching Apex. on TikTok. I was like, oh, so just, Apex Legends, dude. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Exactly. So there you go. So we just had to clarify. And secondly, I don't think you you said. Clearly not, but do you want them to be cumulative, or are you yourself unsure if the ban should accumulate? I'm willing to test these things. I think I think I I personally want them to be cumulative, but I'm also max chaos theory, burn it down right. like um, guy. And as I've already admitted, that doesn't necessarily get uh, get us the best competitive game because I already said five heroes was very competitive. It just wasn't diverse. So there's a I think those are a bit um, at odds with each other. I have to admit, but um, right. 
I also fear, and I think Jake walked away when I said this point, but I also fear that um, if you can't ban a key hero multiple times somehow, um, then it's only you're only alleviated from that meta for like one of the maps of a series, and I don't know if that's transformative enough for me. Uh, but at the, but I do also potentially right. Even enough uh, to make a difference in a five-map series, potentially. Like, if you only get one swing, you, it might not even be enough in a five-map series to make a difference, or even a three-map series. I mean, you might not win on the comp, just because you, like, ban Kiriko, and then you can play something else. You're not gonna... This doesn't mean you just win, like, True. The, the, the map that you're getting the ban on. Uh, yeah, I want it to be... It, you, it, but... the, the devs say this as well sometimes, where they'll say... Like, let's say there's a problem hero, and they, they'll phrase it this way, where they want the change to be substantial enough to matter. Because you don't want such th like a minor change that just adds an extra step, but gets us to the same place and barely adds any variety. So if we're gonna do it, then we better do it in a way that's like, it feels like a new format and adds enough variation. Right. So, but but at the same time, okay. I do agree that like perma banning a player out for a series or, or that's probably bad. So that's why you probably want a robust protect system as well. Okay. So let's. Uh, I need and raise your hands, fellas. Who's got the objection to Frito system? Who wants to go first? Okay, Jake, you go first. Go ahead. I got Johnny's objection. I don't. I don't think in like a five map series. I think like in MOBAs, you do like best of threes, or sometimes they just do like a two map, two two games, and you put in like a group stage format where you're just like scoring up points. They do like two games, so the series are very are are like there's just less times you're doing this drafting stuff. So there's like okay, there's these like break periods that are like like to johnny's point low value for viewers or a lot of viewers don't care maybe in those games it's like more okay but i do agree with johnny that like i think it's anything that has to go back and forth it, the delay gets out of control i mean that's why for me like the blind system is probably like less competitive integrity than like a go back and forth system but i'm just against anything that requires information exchange back and forth i think it should be like everything should be able to be done simultaneously only just to cut any kind of broadcast delay i think like having like a back and forth even like a one like i predict this okay i ban this between the two teams already is going to create too much delay so i think like it has to be a system that i mean johnny's system is like there is no delay because you it's all done from the start of the series it's all done my system is like okay there's a minimal delay because you don't interact with each other and you just do it blind so you just have to like submit it but you also you already are submitting a roster so like you could just you submit a roster and a hero ban, and you don't know anything about the same way you submit a roster. You don't know their roster when you put your team in. You just pick the best <laughs> roster you can. To, and you can make I add one more thing? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Rick Horse. All right. So uh, another thing that we also pr probably should mention because it makes sense is that MOBAs with a draft system, they play the same map over and over again. They just have one map. League of Legends has one map. Dota has one map, and that's all they do. Here's the storm. It failed. It had multiple maps. That was the Should have had one map. <laughs> damn, <laughs> damn, <laughs> damn. If I had one map, Hills of Storm would have been fine. Uh, no, I'm kidding. That was actually some fun maps. But the point, like, so it, it, it one way. Like a multiplier of complexity. Yes. So to, to zoom out, like, you're essentially saying that, like, the spice of life, the variety in MOBA games is the pick and bounce system. Because we're just playing the same map. But because we have the pick and bounce system, we're making the game compl uh, complicated enough where it's enjoyable and you can play it multiple times, time over time, because the pick and pa pan system makes the, more, the game more dynamic. In Overwatch, because we have so many incredible maps, like phenomenal maps, and they're like, they look gorgeous and like and the Havana. different level design and yeah, everything. Yeah, I was literally going to say, we also have Havana, <laughs> Havana, but yeah, go We off. have really good maps and we have Havana. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> recently, the last two maps are so like dark and gray and like kind of like, disappointing or not disappointing sorry that's the wrong word i actually love the new maps but they're so like i i, I guess we just had like esperanza and stuff like that so like well, i can't complain because they're colorful and like there's stuff everywhere but that, that that's the only thing that it made anyway i i i, I digress um so in overwatch our variety is based on maps okay you can we're, we're playing the same game we don't have a pick and ban but the variety in a series especially in the overwatch league comes from the fact you play dive compositions on some maps, and you play brawl compositions on some maps. Anyway, th that it's supposed to be played that way, and sometimes it isn't. Sometimes Except it's just not played yeah. that way, and it sucks. But the dream scenario for everyone is that the maps are supposed to change the way compositions work because of level design. If you Girls add, are supposed to be okay, enough where the level design matters. Yeah, 
So Which then you go. Isn't how it's now actually. we're having a pick and ban, and we have maps simultaneously. Like you, like the game is 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 like beyond chess. Like you're literally playing five D mahjong underwater or whatever the saying is now. Because <laughs> like there's so much complexity to it. It's just I I I think it's just too much. And so like keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. That's, that's Johnny. Too, that's Johnny's motto to get elected. To Johnny's and that's why I just keep it tight. Can, if I can add my system, SVB, uh, I, my system is we need to put more faith in the developers to keep doing a good job of what they have been doing in Overwatch 2. And I know that is just an absolute psychopathic uh, <laughs> take because we've been doing this for the last like <laughs> six or seven years. But I think to the point of even Johnny's situation, you are adding too many layers of complexity. I think there should be a test. I think people should try the ban system. I think, you know, th these tournaments should exist. But for where I am right now, I'm actually okay with it. They just, like, the balance of the game is actually quite good right now. The problem, and the main reason anyone ever wants a ban system is only when we go through these nightmarish metas, like jokes, like that kind of stuff. If we never really had those, or they happened so infrequently, it, we wouldn't even really be having this discussion. Most Disagree. Part. So yeah, Okay, so oh, Okay. Uh, uh, well, go, go ahead, Costa. Finish your thought, and then I'll interject. No, 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 no. I, I, I let, let's let you go because I want to throw it onto you, SBB, because I want to know what the SBB uh, Ooh. truth is. Oof, damn. The moderator I mean, speaks out. I, yeah. I'm just. Really, I'm. I'm. I am going to try and stay roughly neutral. Like I said, I think my end goal is I. I would like to see an asymmetric or watch, but I also recognize it's not a realistic goal. So like I'm trying to balance my own personal. I always try. Like I, I mean, always that have personal. Cool. Super fun is like an arcadey style or like one off mm -hmm. thing. I think there is potential there, but then yeah, and the I... game, it also needs like X to the number of heroes to be like actually viable. So yes, yes, and that that's the thing. Like because because me my perspective is less pro centric, which is why I wanted to get your guys POV because you know you guys are are dealing with the high end. My POV is almost the opposite end. Like I, to be blunt, fellas, I don't give a fuck. What what I feel like Overwatch League Damn. has to come yeah, secondary. Uh, I feel like the game comes first, uh, and the and the the majority of the audience comes first. So like I would love, to, I I would think what's the best for the game, and then we'll fall like everything else will fall in afterwards. So for me, like the concerns about the coaches, the coaching time is irrelevant to me. Perfect, like to be blunt, um, that's their problem. That's there to deal with. That's their job. Um, so for me, like yeah. I'd love to see like Overwatch go that more. I also I was thinking about it the other day when I kind of had an epiphany on it. It was like, I don't think Overwatch will stay the same format forever. Like I don't think it's a game like CS or Dota or League of Legends where like ten years from now it's fundamentally the same game. I don't see that happening. I think Overwatch will and probably multiple times go through another format shift. It might not necessarily be to the depth of like going five v five. But I do think we will have to change something up again fundamentally because our goals are different. Like we we didn't set out the prince like the foundation the way that these other games did, where it's like this is our game. Okay, we we play on one map, like Johnny said. We play on one map. We got items. We can tune the items. We got heroes. But like this is the game. Or even you know CS and Valorant. It's like it's a tax shooter. You hold these angles. This is the map design. This is the sight line. Like these you are the guns. Each other in the head. How much does it really matter what your skills do? I mean, Literally. it does, and you need to balance them. But like, if you're like a monster skill skill wise player, like you just will not be stopped by any skill utility. It's like irrelevant. You know, you just click at their heads and they all die. Exactly. So. Whereas I think Overwatch is not like that because not only are we adding more heroes, we're also adding new game modes. And to Custa's point about well, these only happen when we're in nightmarish ban scenario or nightmarish balance scenarios. That will be the norm. I think that will be the norm. Like nightmarish balance scenarios, we're we're in the peace period now because we didn't have a hero. But we will have another hero in a moment. I in think like another every season. time a new hero comes out, I think here, here's my problem with your point, Custa. I don't. I think you're saying okay, the devs are doing a good job, and like let's trust them to keep doing a jo good job. I think what it means for the devs to do a good job from like a business point of view, it's like a public corporation. They they need to make the choices that like maximize interest in the game, maximize the player base. I think it's literally they are doing from that perspective they're doing a good job by making the new heroes op they like like that's why i don't criticize them for making kiriko op or joker queen op it's like that is the right thing for them to do and esports is like an irrelevant detail in the yeah. picture when you consider like how much is at stake with like hundreds of people and their employment i mean for like the game itself it's like a much bigger venture from like a business standpoint so the game itself to SVE's point is all like it's just being realistic that it should be like the like almost the only priority like the esports is a priority is a lower priority but it's like the first priority is so much more important that it's almost like the other priorities don't exist like they're there we can do cool things for them but the game is what matters and i think from the perspective of like 
I think every time there's a new hero, the devs are doing the right thing, making the new hero OP, so everyone wants to play it. And the, it's just a, like the unfortunate consequence of that new hero being OP is that it's going to create one trick metas for pro players. And, and so also, it's like inevitable that it's going to continue to happen and it needs to be rectified in a systematic way rather than like, like, I don't see that changing. Like, I think they're yes. always going to make the new hero OP. They should keep uh, making the new hero and OP. I, I'll also, and, but we have to have some way to mitigate the new hero being so OP. And also add to Jake's point, very well said, Jake. I'll just add to that as well, that even with the best intentions, they will make something OP. Like, that's the other thing. Like, I don't think it's yeah, also always nef it's always nefarious that, like, we want the new hero to be OP. Like, it's not even nefarious. Nefarious is perhaps the wrong word, but it's not even, like, always that they're like, we want this new hero to be OP. I think... Even the most well-intentioned balance team with a game like Overwatch will occasionally make like put out something that's just OP. Like just that's just how it will be. And like I said, I think the other thing we haven't even factored in is like the new game modes are going to come. Most like, and I think this is another fundamental issue Overwatch, but potentially a format shift will address is that not only are the maps different, the way the game mode is played is entirely different, right? It's not just that the like it's the same objectives but in a different map. We have push, we have hybrid, we have you know like control. And we're gonna have another thing. So what if that another thing is now like it tests a completely different set of skill sets that the other modes like uh, don't even factor in, right? So like if we have a domination and now there's multiple control points that you have to like hold at one point in time, does that completely change like how certain heroes operate? Blah blah blah. So like to your point, Custa, uh, I I don't have a firm. I'm, I'm I'm that's why I came with an open mind. I brought the smartest fellas I could bring, and I was like, I want to hear what they got to say. Because I this is all you got. I, oh, we're screwed. I, I, I want to counter. I want to counter with one thing. Okay, because yes. here's the thing. I agree with you guys. We might end up into this fundamental issue, but I think maybe I'm not wanting to hit that emergency button just yet. Like I would love to see how a season of Overwatch League goes now that everyone is playing five v five and Overwatch Two actually exists. And if we get to the end of next uh, this season, and we're like shit still sucks we can still have a meta like the jotes then i want to start hitting that button of like hey we're going to be this issue but i guess where my stance is right now is i want to give the developers a chance and i want to i want to let them and i think the further you move the overwatch league away from the live service game even if it is just a simple two hero band per map or whatever the fuck you know johnny's golden hour thingamabob um I think the further you move away from that the less interest that people have because people are wanting to see everything and the game that they actually play. Yeah, go ahead, Jake. That's a great bridge to the next half of our conversation because yes. I also think it should happen in rank first. Yeah, I yes. right. It's I think, perfect. Like, I don't yeah. want. I'm not advocating that. Like, okay, so Overwatch League starting. Let's put this rule change in and let's go next season. I don't. I'm not that confident in it either. I, I think you know you're right to be cautious, Costa. Like, like we shouldn't just shake it up for no reason. Even yes. though I think there are reasons, but like I think basically we can test it in rank. I think ranked is actually the better place to implement these things because it allows people to have agency over the game even if it's marginal like imagine that my system right where you rank game is one map and at the start of the map like you could do it different ways i would say like the players on each team vote and like highest vote ban on each team gets banned and if it's a tie it's just rng there's no like runoff shit like you know don't make it complicated yeah. it's like a one-off yeah. like which already exists in mobas like when i play i play dota but like i'm just playing ranked right it's play all pick but even before you pick an all pick you can like you can pick a hero ban, for banning yeah. and it doesn't guarantee the ban there's like some rng involved whether it gets banned or not but if i'm like i hate playing against this hero this hero destroyed me last game i can try to ban it and it's like maybe it's like 50 50 whether it gets banned or not but at least like I can prevent that hero from being in like half my games, you know, if I'm like just a hater of this hero. And so that's just like, that's the table stakes for playing all pick. And so, and that's not, I mean, all pick is already different than the, what the pros play with the draft, you know? Um, yeah. But obviously they don't want to have like a whole draft in every rank game. And so in Overwatch, I think the system like this, where you have some way of determining like one ban per team, realistically, nobody, like it's so rare these days, especially these days, like I've not had a try hard game in Overwatch in like months, you know, I get like a couple yeah. here and there. Whereas it used to be really common. And so now it's like, it already is the case that ranks chaos and you just kind of like play whatever and like play what seems good and you play your other teammates picking random stuff, whatever. Maybe you ask them to switch if it's like super terrible, but like you just accept that it's chaos. And I think having a voted hero ban, it's like, it's already chaos. So let's just add a way for players to like express themselves in every game. Like, God, I hate Roadhog so much. Roadhog's, when Roadhog's like overtuned, and like Arissa's overtuned. God, I hate this hero so much. I'm just gonna like vote it every game. And if everyone wants to vote it, then that hero can't be played in, in that that ranked match. 
Yeah. Um, and you can even do it where you're like blind to the opposing team's roster. So if you like know the players in the other team, you like ban their one trick. That's like, could be considered a grief. You just have to ban. If you don't want to play against Sim, you have to ban that without knowing whether the enemy team has a Sim one trick, let's say. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean. Like, I think introducing more p individual player agency into the game experience where you're like, I want to play this type of a watch. Like when the, when the, and maybe even in that system, you golden protect the new hero. Like, obviously, everyone wants to play Kiriko, so you don't want to get, like, griefed by people just banning Kiriko in, like, the new hero drop. So Kiriko can't be banned. But at least I can ban some other hero, so it's not, like, we're playing the Overwatch League meta for every single match now, or or we lose, right? Like, oh, the, yeah, the enemy team's playing Lucio, Kiriko, Winston, and my team's like, not? We lose. That's cool. That's fun. They're playing, like, the meta comp, and we're not. We lose. You know? And so at least you could, like... Oh, we have no hitscan player? Okay, they're on Soldier and Mercy. We lose. You know, <laughs> like there's a, there's some of those situations do come up. And I think having in a rank system, I think that's like the best place for us to start with like some kind of very minimal, like one band per team system, just to allow players to express themselves in, in the ranked experience. Right. And that's that's you you've done a you've done, a, done me a great service there, Jake, and kind of leading us nicely into that, as you said, the next section of well, how would it work in rank? Because we know we've we've had a very good discussion about for pro level, but where the most of our listeners are probably concerned is like, don't you dare fucking bring it to rank, SVB. I don't bring keep your bullshit to the theoretical or watch league <laughs> discussions. Don't bring it to fucking ranked. So let's have a little thought thought process then. And actually, uh let's again quick quick show of hands. Who thinks that it would be potentially viable to implement in ranked in some way so all of you okay all of you think that it could be done in ranked okay so that's very interesting i'm going to take ranked it to frito chaos. First. we're not there's nothing to lose man. i'm going to take <laughs> it to frito first because he's been very patient he's listened to a lot of our arguments frito in ranked why why could hero bands work and if you want you can give me your proposition as well of like i think this is how we start mainly because I think Jake's story is actually like really useful because what he's described, he is a former pro player and coach at a really high level in one game and plays another game that is competitive, but casually, right? Because you don't make content on it as far as I know, yeah, right? I'm so, like, so, I have like 4,000 hours of Dota, but that is casual for Dota. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not like That's I play thousands of hours of Counter-Strike, for example. Uh, sure. So uh, like, like, I think we've all got this other game often that we might like frequent but like we want to be able to interact with on our terms and me and SV talk about this like on Bat Hearthstone Battlegrounds or something where I'll watch a creator on that and they'll make a video and say, man, this is the meta, this is totally broken. And I'm sitting here just like, man, I, you know, I know Undead's overpowered now, but I think the mechanics are kind of fun and I just but go and play fun, yeah. a few times a week and blow things up and it's fine. And like, I think a lot of Overwatch fans are like that too. And the nice thing though about a user selected ban as opposed to like map pools which they did try in ranked is that like if you hate bastion or roadhog or symmetra or whatever it is like you can at least feel that sometimes you can avoid the mechanics you don't like that's basically what it is and it, it's it's not even i think the justification for uh overwatch league bans is one thing and the justification for it to also be in ranked or first tried in ranked is almost another thing like there's some benefits of meta diversity but also it's the key word that jake said which is a little ironic because uh some prominent devs uh argued with me quite profusely about this term agency so there's a the less is more uh, aspect of of restricting the format allows for more opportunities because otherwise you get some maps that are dominant by some strategies i mean i i personally love to ban just for the fun factor I, it, ban Symmetra on Li Zhang because I think it's just lame. The whole rush to the point, set a turret. Ha ha, we beat you here first. And I'm just going to hide my turret. I don't like you that. Play not this a fan. You lose. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Even, even at like not that high of a rank level. I mean, it's like you don't have to be an expert to like press the TP and get to mid first and camp the trope. Like, yeah. Right. And I see that happen to a lot of players where they come up with, uh, where they come up to strategies that are just obnoxious and are, and, and maybe the whole your Overwatch channel is based on this being a thing, but ranked meta of like what is the what are the noob traps that give you the most gain with the least amount of understanding or effort or synchronizes the most with random teammates that also don't know how to play. Um, those things are much easier and comfortable to navigate if a, a, a ban system is implemented. The biggest concerns I think are um, individual one trick um, being targeted, quote unquote, or um, certain heroes that make the game play better. A whole nother side argument that maybe we don't have time for in this conversation, but 
as Aaron Keller's blog post that was just released today explained, Reinhardt's got like a 58% win rate. We normally have flats on the show, okay? And, and he loves to like try to silence the Reinhardt propaganda. But the truth is for we know metal rank... What'd you say? We know. The we know. Oh, yeah. You, you tune in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, for 90% of players, Reinhardt is the playable tank always, regardless of the meta. So if he becomes top tier viable all of a sudden, he's like super viable everywhere, which is the case right now, which is kind of an interesting little side tangent. Like no one's really talking about this, but Ryan as like a ranked pick is super inflated now because the player base knows how to play that comp better. Now we might debate back and forth whether that's good or bad for the game, but at the very least, if you aren't a Rhine player and you don't want to play Rhine every single game or every single King's Row that you go up against in your plat game, you at least have some agency to like express yourself and not feel like you're hard throwing games. The same thing goes for hit scan dominated metas or, you know, if you feel forced to play Sojourn in top 500, whatever the case may be. So everyone yeah. kind of gets the experience me, they that's, want. That's Widowmaker. It's like, oh, I'm on Junkertown first. Like if I don't play Widow, I lose. Yeah. I don't like playing Widow. And you can't even play flankers against Widow on this map. It's like I just play Hanzo and hope for the best. But and what's funny is, is like, and, and this, like if you don't have a hit game player, you're just your game is ruined on like Circuit and Junkert Town. This is a nightmare for the devs to balance as well because that's true at a certain skill threshold. But the beauty of like let's true, say the ninety percent, they actually get to see the rooms of the map and play Junker Town in an entirely different way. So it's kind of almost beautiful to be able to experience these maps with different comps in them because then you can get these other heroes like. You know, Tracer zipping around the rooftops of uh, Junker Town as opposed to needing to play a sniper to be viable. So I, I think it gets more out of the game, frankly, right. by taking out these top ranked meta problems, let's say. It, it opens up for more opportunities for other things to be played. Yeah, and what you're alluding to there, essentially what people would say would be, oh, there's a ban meta. There's going to be a ban meta in rank. Like, everyone will ban the same thing, which, again, I'm, I'm going to try and bring some objectivity, but for now, I, I can't contain my own anger, which is like, people always make this argument where they're like, oh, well, it, it, it'll just be a ban meta. I think the, the, the big problem I have with that is that to assume that there's a ban meta would be to assume that we're all playing the same game all the time or that we all come yeah. into every game with the same assumptions which is just patently not true because if there was if we were so unified in a ban meta we'd also be so unified in what we pick but we never fucking are because we all come yeah. into Overwatch with our own ideas you know whether that's the bronze bastion main or whether that's the GM guy who won Trix Widowmaker everyone's playing the game differently in fact even just game to game especially right now with how the matchmaker's been going but even generally it's so it's so wild and varied. One game you got a Doomfist one trick, the next game you got like a guy who plays all the tanks perfectly well or whatever it is. So every game is different. So to, to assume that there would be a ban meta, I think is is a fallacy. I I don't think that's ever going to be true. Everyone has different gripe points. Custa, you have something you want to add? I I've done this thought experiment in my chat before as well, and we can do it in yours with right here. Like, all right, chat, you guys, if you believe there would be a ban meta, let's test this out. If you were to ban a hero right now in the ranked meta, what would you ban? Type in what you think you would ban at this moment, because I think you'd get, there would be a meta of, there's probably 10 heroes that are consistently banned, but you would not get the same one every game, right? No. So like, even right here, you got Mercy, you got Widow, you got Kiriko, someone's dip banning Sim, and, and, and that's an important factor as well with this. When I play League of Legends, I ban Yumi 100% of the time. Not because she's good, because fuck Yumi. Because who, like, Legit. play the fucking game, okay? That's what I'm asking for. I would do the same thing. I Right now, I'd probably ban Mercy. Even though I could probably play Mercy and win more games because I just pocket my hit scan. I just don't have fun playing against her. And that is an important thing in bands, especially when you go below the GM level where there is more of a meta. People just will pick what they don't like playing against, right? And that will be consistent across a lot of these things. So I'm a big fan of the idea. Oh, wait, Johnny, you you, you pick up before I start picking up Sam. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I, look, uh, well, are you sure? Yeah, you go. All right. Okay. So considerate, so, so polite. <clears throat> yeah, all right. Well, screw it. So. You know, for context here, I actually used to be on Custer's side. I used to be a stout defender of leaving the game intact. No bans whatsoever. And then, over the course of the years, I actually I, I, I started I, I started betraying Custer. And I started stepping away from the idea of, Real you know, shit. Usual, no usual. hero bans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we used to joke about it on Plat Chat. That like, it's oh, not, you know, don't talk about hero, hero bans right? again. You know, you, Sorry? You're, you're down for hero bans, right, Scott? I just like... Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. Oh, in, rank, in ranked, in ranked, yeah. I'm, I'm in ranked. In ranked, I'm definitely Discord. Down yeah, in ranked, in ranked, in ranked. Okay. In ranked, okay. In the Discord chat, it was like, oh, Custos, you know, he doesn't want to hear about. It. Sorry. Well, wow. 
Uh, I, all I have to do now is just like put words in Jake's mouth and then I don't know if I won't hear. So I, I, I'm sorry, I stepped away when uh, Freed was talking as well. I just have to get some water. Uh, but I don't know if you touched on the player agency. I heard you mention the player agency with the developers or whatever. But I think the reason why I started to transition into the idea of liking hero bands when it comes to ranked is because I think that is the most important aspect of hero bands and why I think it'd be good for the game is because the player would have a choice in determining how the game would turn out, like what their game experience would be like. And I think that is very powerful. So, you know, if you're just comparing the two sides where it's like, how much fun is it? Like, what is the net fun of, for the player to be like, I don't like playing against Symmetra. Um, you know, I, I played lots of Ryan earlier today in Ranked, and I was like, I got some games versus Symmetra, and it was so annoying. Like, the net fun for me banning Symmetra, I think, outweighs the quote-unquote unfun of the enemy team thinking they removed Symmetra. Like, oh, my, my game experience sucks, bro. They banned Symmetra, and like, I hate this. Like, I can't enjoy this game now. I can't enjoy this map. I, I, don't, think, I don't think that flies. I think I think it's way more fun, just like net out, to to remove a hero that a player and a team doesn't like versus feeling like the enemy team is banning what you want to do. Now, you know, we can get into a separate conversation about like one tricks and how important one tricks are and how much people one trick in Overwatch. Because if you're a if you're a Mercy player and you feel like Mercy is getting banned a higher percent of the time, then you know, maybe the maybe that's Maybe that's a data point that the developers can use, but that would be a problem to that player base, right? Um, and that's something I'd love to discuss later. But like we've gotten these blogs recently about like pick rates, um, win rates. I think that ban rates would just be another metric that the developers could make incredibly informed decisions about in how to make the game more enjoyable. And so actually, I, I just like pitched that to developers. Like if you had a ban metric, that could make your decisions even easier. But I I digress. I think that this decision of whether like player agency choosing your game experience, I think is very important. And that's why I think I sort of support hero bands now is because I think it would improve people's experience with the game. I think it would give them some kind of, uh, some kind of like alleviation to what they dislike most about the game in being able to remove something, an aspect of the game that they don't find enjoyable. Like, I, I hate we always have to play against Reinhardt uh, Lucio compositions. Let me ban Lucio. I, I hate playing against Farah Mercy. Let me ban Mercy or Farah. Um, stuff like that, right? And I think being being able to give the player choice of removing that, I think is an incredibly strong motivator for people to keep playing the game. So I think that's why I'm actually behind hero bands. And, you know, for your side thing, just for the record, like I would even, you know, add that kind of player agency to maps. Like I've always, I, since the inception of the game, I've always supported the idea of maybe being able to like remove one map when you queue ranked or remove one or two maps. Uh, you, you could actually do this in World of Warcraft for the longest time where it's like they have like eight battlegrounds or whatever. I don't know what it is now, but you could deselect like one battleground. Like I hate this battleground. I just don't want to play it, but I'm fine with all the other ones. And I think a similar thing in Overwatch, like, I, you know, when, when Assault was in the game, like, I really just hate Hanamura. Like, I really don't want to queue into Hanamura right now. Giving the player that option to remove that pool, I don't think it's going to be a significant impact when it comes to, like, the queue time, unless you're, you know, maybe, like, top 50 or whatever. Um, and I think it I think it makes the game experience that much more enjoyable for the player. For the devs as well. It's like, okay, this is the map everyone hates. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. We should take another look at this one. Because right now there's no way to get that feedback other yes. than like pulling the BNAP for them. Other than like, everyone yelling about Coliseo on, yeah, on Twitter. Exactly, like, exactly. fuck this yeah. map. <laughs> yeah. But I think, I think that's such a blunt feedback metric compared to something that is like gathered automatically. I mean, unless you're AFKing the ban phase, right? For like a hero. Because I think the only time you'd get a hero, like, like for the Mercy One Trick argument, the only time I could imagine you get a, a banned meta where there's a hero that is banned like a, a high percentage of the time, enough where, like, so there's like the true one tricks. Like, there's this guy who plays May. And if you, and I know, like, if I, like, I've, like, done it to him before, if I, like, take the May because I load in faster, he'll abandon the game. Like, unironically, he'll just abandon the game. And I'll just do that just to grief, like, because why not? Like, <laughs> Like I think you, something. I think you like screw you if you're gonna actually play this way. Like you're actually gonna abandon the game so your hero profile looks cute. Like no way, yeah. man. Like you're wasting everyone else's time 
because of some weird purity thing. And then Chad there's people Jake. who are like, play Chad Sim Griefer. 95% of the time, but like they will play May. You know, if they get like two Sim one tricks in the game, they won't abandon. They'll like, they'll play Junkrat or something. You know what I mean? They'll like, they'll, they have some other not their hero they like to play, but they have like a secondary pick. You know, like the Mercy player was like, all right, I'll play Moira or whatever if, if I can't play, if the other person plays Mercy, you know? So like, the people who are like the psychopath one tricks who like abandon the game because they can't play their hero, that will be banned basically by by hero bans or like you I don't know some of your account is eventually gonna get banned if, if that's like what's happening and your your hero's getting banned you're abandoning, but those people are very rare. I think like even the people most people would consider one tricks are at this point, especially in Overwatch two, are more like specialists. Like I see a lot of people who are like hardcore drunk out one tricks in Overwatch one, and now they'll like play Torb or whatever if they need to play. You know what I mean? They'll like they'll have some mix up that's like sort of maybe it's like a similar aiming style hero or whatever. And and so that if they need to bring it out, they'll bring it out. So in my, I think that's where the one tricking has gotten in Overwatch two, just by like the natural balance pressure of the game. There's not many like the purest one tricks anymore. But I think if you're like a purist one trick, that should be banned. Your enjoyment is not worth protecting if you're like a game ruiner who's gonna like literally abandon if somebody takes your hero. I think that's like un like that can't be protected. You know, it's like unacceptable behavior pattern. Whereas for the people who like just love playing Mercy a lot, the only time Mercy is getting perma banned is if Mercy is really annoying and super OP. Like that's a rare combination. A lot of times there's like annoying heroes. Like I hate Widowmaker, but I can recognize that Widowmaker isn't like fundamentally imbalanced. I just hate her. I think she ruins the game because I don't want to play I don't like playing Tracer, I don't like playing Widowmaker. And I think like I mean it happens that Genji and Sombra are bad. So you basically are screwed. You need to play these two heroes that are good or get or Tracer and Widow if the enemy team has a widow. And so it's like ah oh, like that pissed me off. I don't want to do that. I know what I have to do. I don't want to do it. So like that I'm annoyed, you know? And I could get rid of that hero. But I don't think like everybody in the game feels that way about Widow, you know? Like, if you're a tank man, you're like, whatever, Widow maker, she's like, it's not a big deal, I can, like, shield her, I can just, I have a bunch of HP, I don't get one hit, you know? Maybe they don't, they have another, they don't like Zen, you know? They have another pain point. So, the only time the Mercy's getting, like, permaban is if she's in, like, a crazy out-of-control state and really annoying to play against, which she should just get patched really fast. You know, like, that shouldn't last long. And if there's another metric, like, wow, Mercy's banned 50% of the time, like, they should get a patch out in two days, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, yeah, this yeah. is such a high priority because it's, like, clearly screwing over the experience for people. And the thing is, if you don't have that metric, maybe people just stop playing the game for a while. Like, that's how I that's how I control my experience. When I play against Widowmaker 10 games in a row, I'm done. I'm just done. I'm out. You know what I mean? I'll, like, grief a couple games, and then I'm done. You know? It's like, I'm just going <laughs> to another game. That's, that's the control you have over your experience when there's no control over your experience, is you just stop, and you do something else. You play another game. And that's not what the devs want. So I think having this agency... Can only be a good thing the pain points i think are just minor and i think i think the positives are are really strong um for at least a trial period like let's try and rank for like a month like what, what's gonna happen you know is it that bad if if i don't know i, I can't imagine yeah. what could possibly go wrong maybe there will be things of course there'll be things that go wrong but maybe in the end it'll be like oh the system has potential and we'll keep some part of it and keep iterating whatever yeah, I think I just want to add to that is that there is, there is I think, a self-regulating nature to it is that it, uh, surely a banned meta cannot go on as long as a real meta in the sense that let's take an extreme example. Because I think like when we're playing, when we were against Sojourn, I think undoubtedly when Sojourn was OP, like especially at the higher level, everyone would have just banned Sojourn a lot of the time. And the argument was clear that you already kind of pointed out is like, well, you might say, well, what about the Sojourn mains who want to play Sojourn? Why are you banning them out of the game? But what about the silent minor a majority almost of people who are just not playing Overwatch anymore because they're like, I'm tired of Sojourn every game. So you're kind of, you're prioritizing the sort of vocal, what about my one trick over the majority of people who are like, because clearly if they're all unified in feeling like Sojourn should be banned, then clearly the mass sentiment is this hero is a problem and we don't like playing against this hero. But on top of that though, even if we take this extreme example, so let's say like, People keep banning Sojourn. People keep banning Sojourn. Eventually, there's like this a thing that's going to happen where people are going to forget how annoying that hero is because they banned it too often. And then it's going to be like, actually, now the new next annoying thing is Roadhog. And it, after mm -hmm. a couple of games, you're like, uh, okay, I haven't seen that much Sojourn lately, but now it's fucking Roadhogs everywhere. I got to ban Roadhog. So the sentiment will shift again, right? And it'll be like, okay, now it's Roadhog is a new annoying thing. Or the map will cause it to shift. It's like you might be banning Mercy all, all the time and then all of a sudden you lock into Havana. I know every player in the fucking lobby is going to be like, D dog, let's get rid of Widowmaker right now, oh, right you. now. Yeah, yeah. Right? Or if it's like a brawl map and you're like, oh, I don't want to play against May or whatever, right? Like, 
the sentiment I think, I think self-regulates. I think the, the Zhang Sim example that Freedom is really good too. It's like, what is it like to play this map without Sim? I don't even know because if my teammate's not playing Sim, I'm playing Sim on this map because I want to win. You know, like I know, I know what it, I know. You just like basically have to do this to win. You know. So, so I, I I don't you know if I was a developer and I was listening to this conversation though. I guess my argument, like, finally get to make a devil's advocate argument. This is amazing. <laughs> finally, the whole blazer you want to have three Just hours into this. The, the argument would be that, like, well, if some maps are supposed to cater to uh, specialization and, like, a certain hero, so, like, Junker Queen point A, like, maybe that's supposed to be a Widowmaker point A, right? And a ban system is almost like reducing the edge um, of some of these maps and what makes them special and you're removing the ability to play niche heroes on niche maps whereas you know without the, the band system like you would actually free up some of these heroes like you know in king's row on uh, or sorry may on king's row or widowmaker on Dragon queen point a or like you can make several examples where like heroes that don't always get played they do find playtime on some maps and if you were to you know, it, that hero is most likely going to be, like, synonymous with that map because it's such a good pick there. Then you're just removing it and you're, re like, reducing the ability to play some of these niche heroes. That would be, like, the counter argument, mm -hmm. I think. I don't know why I, I'm raising I, my hand. I... Okay, no, you go. Okay, I don't know why I'm raising the hand. I'm the moderator, so I'll decide who talks. So <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here, which is I'm going to counterpoint you and then counterpoint myself. Which is that? Nice. Great, I love that. If, if you neutral. if you if <laughs> yeah. you pick, uh, let's say you know, so let's say uh, Havana, and you're like De the devs are like, hey, we made this map to be sniper friendly. Well, dev dev reinforce the player base are telling you they don't like what you what you made. The player base are telling you that you might be like, we want Widowmaker to be played on Havana, but the players are like, yeah, but that ain't fun, dog. So stop, right? Whereas there's different specialities. No, that no, would no, work. no, no. They're, they're removing it because it's strong. Really well, but it's not fun. No, because here's the thing: because would people like, ban would people ban Reinhardt on King's Row? Would people ban like, Reinhardt on King's Row? The, no, the they wouldn't. Example. They wouldn't yeah, ban exactly. Reinhardt on like, King's Row, yeah. would they? No, no, no. what? Because yeah, people yeah, enjoy people playing against Reinhardt on King's Row. No, because people want to play. Honestly, I think it's like I'm not feeling bad as Reinhardt, even if Reinhardt's 58 percent win rate or whatever. I don't think I'll ever ban Ryan or like yeah, because it's fun. Because people enjoy people. If you ask the majority, even if they're winning. Like, if you ask the majority even if I can of players, beat Widow, I'm like pissed off that it's in the game. I'm like, oh great, I get one hit again. Even if I'm winning the match, I'm still I'm mad that I have to play against this crap. You know, it's like exactly. even though I can win the Junker Town map because I can play Hanzo and like eventually I will kill the Widow. I'm like good at Hanzo. It's just pissing me off. Like I don't want to do it. You know, I want to do something else. Like I'm exactly. I'm, so we just hate you know? Widowmaker. Is that the take? no, no? I think different. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 no, 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 it's, it's a different diagram. It's a yeah, strong... hate Widowmaker. So I get to express that. If you, if you, Johnny, you hate playing against Ramatra on Rhine, you can also express that. And it's just a, a democratic consolidation of that sentiment. If it turns out that everybody in the lobby hates Widowmaker, then yeah, Widowmaker is going to be the one band. And so that's why I think a democratic, like a voting-based system would work the best because, you know, in the end, it's like, yeah, if three out of five players on your team say, I hate playing against Widowmaker, of all the heroes in Overwatch, three of us pick the same one. Like, yeah, like, let's not play against it. I think that's reasonable. Just as easily, the enemy team so, can say, we we love snipers, and we're going to ban, like, Sigma, because he's such an effective, like, shield hero who can or ban Wrecking Balls. You can't come flank and get on our snipers. And then we, maybe we can't play Widow, but we're going to play Hanzo Ash. You still have to deal with snipers, you know? But, like, in the end, it won't be, like, uh, like, maybe in you, and I take a tool away from you because I love playing sniper. Like, if I'm a Widowmaker one, I'm probably playing a Wrecking Ball every game, you know, on Junker Town. Because I don't, I don't, it's like an uninteractive hero for Widowmaker. You know, you need your teammates to deal with it. And so, so here's, in that here's... way, it becomes democratic. Like, well, who cares the most? So what's the what's the most popular hated hero? Um... So here's, <laughs> here's the counterpoint to my own point, which I'm going to now add in, which is that the dev, dev reinforce might reply and say, do the players always know what's best for them? And do they always do what's best for like the game as a as a as a as an enterprise? Because let's say, again, we might this the answer might be, well, gold and protect has to be, but we can't gold and protect everything. Cause let's say they release a new hero and everyone's like, we want to ban the new hero. Not even because it's OP, not even because it's saying they just like we don't we don't wanna we don't want that in our game. And it might not actually be that frustrating, but they've decided it. And now as a dev, you're kind of restricted. This is I think Partly why the hero pools thing and the hero the map votes thing is is a thing because maybe if you gave the community enough choice they would just run King's Row like nine out of ten maps right and they would never play 
Havana and they'd never play all the maps you spent so hard working and making and advertising and being like, come play our game and the new player locks in and they never get to pick Esperanza because nobody, uh, nobody wants to play that map. Everyone wants to play this thing. And it might be the same effect with like certain heroes. I'm actually going to let Frito counterpoint because Frito's been very, you know, patient. He has not really uh, stepped over us, which is very kind of him. So Frito, like... <laughs> and rare! It's, yeah, you're welcome, everybody. I've been polite. No, uh... So, to the, yeah, uh, to what's the, answer the question? Of, like, to the answer of, like, well, the devs might say, well, the players don't always know what's best for them. They might start banning stuff, but that's, like, actually, it's infringing on our vision of the game design and, like, the heroes we want to put in and the maps we want to put mm -hmm. in. Yeah, I like that point. Um, I kind of want to make lots of points. The So... Someone said the ban might remove the opportunity that's baked into the game, let's say. Let's say Sim's only good on Li, Li Zhang. Kind of. I mean, that's almost kind of true, right? So maybe she loses some of her playtime because she's able to be banned. Or Widowmaker has a few maps. I mean, a lot now. But uh, back in the day, I think it was mostly Havana, maybe you might argue. Um, I think the ban system also could open up the opportunity of these other heroes. Like, we we know them as uh, connected to those maps. Whereas a ban system for those players might open up opp opportunities for them to play those heroes on other maps. And I don't know what those are necessarily. I'm kind of, like, dreaming this up. But uh, an another place, yeah. like, like Sim might be a budget Junkrat in another scenario, or May, or something, if those heroes are banned in their ideal uh, uh, circumstance. But it is true, definitely, that there's... Uh, hive mind player sentiment that believes certain things um a big one might be like a lot of the players assume sojourn is ruining their games and they'll tell me they'll say like you don't know frito like actually it uh she is dominant in gold because it's what wins fights but really the truth is the win rate doesn't reflect that like the stats don't but the player um sentiment or experience they feel feel it i don't care about objectivity <laughs> Like, like I think the player feeling uh, um, will will trounce that because really we're we're not trying to be objective about the um, competitive integrity. No one even mentioned that in, in the, thus far. We're we're talking about the experience of being able to express yourself in game. And as Jake said, it's not the point whether he wins or loses. It's about the mechanics in play and what do I have to go against. And if you don't want to play against one shots, then you can kind of uh, sculpt that away. So. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if I answered your question directly. I, I kind of I made like a side point that applied to multiple things. So I don't know if uh, no, I think I think so. Basically, your I... answer would be like, well, devs. It, at the end of the day, you make this game so players can play it, and if they want to play this game, then that's it. Sucks to be you. Whatever plans you had to implement this, that, the other, the players want this. Give the players that. Yeah, there is a fear of of pure democracy, though. I mean, <laughs> my country is not a, a pure democracy. We're a representative republic for a reason, right? So because uh, the, the the masses might not, might skew the game in a, in a poor direction. But I just, I think more times than not, it's not going to be any worse than just like abusing a very easy mechanic, which I think is what most of Ranked is. A lot of times, there's either pl playing what you want anyway, that, that that's going to happen regardless, or uh, abusing mechanics, and and that's a huge percentage of it. I think most people would try to attack the mechanics that are either easily abused or obnoxious to them personally, whatever it is, whether it's Bastion or Zenyatta or or whatever. And everyone's kind of got their own uh, viewpoint of that. And because of that, whatever um, consensus gets reached is likely a shift towards a more fun experience for most people. Because the alternative, and I, I, this was kind of said earlier about like, the mercy situation and um, what, what you're kind of describing is like an uh, is almost a popularity ban meta, not a ban meta based on actual meta, but a, a ban meta based on the unpopularity or perceived notion of that. Um, I, I think to any degree that the a ban meta does exist, it it's based on an actual meta that just would have been worse. So season two, it's so fresh in my mind, and I, it's burned into my retina, uh, the kill feeds of damage amps and roadhog hooks and things like that. So um, I would have liked to at least have some opportunity to mix up that meta to some degree. Like that's like the best example to me because that's a whole nother style of Overwatch that's like very uniform, very specific things were good. It's like, you heal a lot or you snipe and that's it. Everything else is irrelevant. And I think in metas like that, you have the opportunity to raise some things out of the woodwork that otherwise would just feel unplayable based on their 
competitive unviability. What it would do in a meta like now, where everything's diverse anyway, I think is have like almost no side effect. So yeah, I think last season, Mercy would have ban been banned a lot because she enabled Disagree. so many things. And I want to hit on this after you finish. Right, well, you Sojourn too. So was, Mercy might have been, but but like there Arisa? was a lot of complaints. Yeah, I was yes, gonna say, there, I would also be. Well, there's like anyway, five there's, heroes people would ban a lot. Is, yeah. is remotely balanced, there's not gonna be one target. I mean, it would have to be like a crazy out of control meta where it's a hard one trick meta and the heroes that are being one tricked are like, there's one of them that's considered really unfun over the other ones. Like, who could say if it's Sojourner Mercy in a Sojourn Mercy, like, locked meta? You know, like, even even those two heroes, if those are the problems, it'll be, like, at, at the worst case scenario, it's, like, 50-50 between which one of them is banned. So the yeah, Mercy player still gets to play Mercy most of the time, and the Soldier players play Soldier most of the time. Like, and you have such a, so many heroes that ban it. It's so unlikely there would ever, like, a, a true fixation where it's, like, everyone votes the same thing every time. I mean... I just see that being it's not like happening. It's not unrealistic happening. I, I with agree. the number of possibilities there are. I think most most games would be like every hero has one vote and it's like a coin flip. Or yeah. or maybe it's like one hero has two votes and so it wins. You know, like that. I, I think getting more than two votes, it would be like shock me. That would probably you're saying about yeah. democracy. I think a pure democracy is a wonderful system when your population is five. Like, like I don't think there's <laughs> any kind of other system. True. Like, it's literally five people voting. I mean, like, it's like within a contained system where the outcomes are predetermined. There's like 30, 30 heroes. You can vote for whatever one you want. And, and there's five of you. Like, that the pure democracy is, like, very obviously the solution, I think, in that in that very limited, unique, constrained environment. Okay, so yes, gonna, on an gonna, island, we can all get together. That's right. fine. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, so, we're, yes. we're all on an island. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I was mostly I devil's advocating anyway, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we, we, again, we are trying to generate anti-arguments because I know all of us are, are pro it, yeah. so I, I do want to keep bringing those up. I want to let Custa have his interjection, then I want to take us to, like, the actual implementations of how we might suggest this happen. So, Custa. Yeah, I, I think the the most important thing to me is the player emotional state. And, you know, I think the season two, bringing up what just Frito said on season two, is like, if you brought up to people in season two, I, in my opinion, during that phase, there was that hard matter of like Orisa, Kiriko, Mercy, Sojin, and I don't know, whatever the fuck you wanted to be the last one, right? And there was just a ridiculous amount of damage. I wouldn't have known which one I wanted to ban. And I think the one I would have banned would have varied from game to game depending on what just fucked me in the last game, if I'm being honest. Like, did the Arisa just run over my team? Did the Sojin just take over the game? Did the Mercy just keep rezzing? Like, I don't think you would ever have a collective agreement on one thing should get banned. And to Frito's point earlier, if one thing did just start getting banned, let's say in the height of Sojin, we just started banning Sojin all the time, something else is going to beat you and you're going to get upset at something. The game is never going to be perfect where you think everyone is happy and this one thing is the problem. So at some point, you'd stop banning Sojin and you'd ban something else until you start losing a Sojin again, right? So there would be that variation every single time. And with the democracy, as Jake just said, I think it would balance out quite nicely. And I think that is what we're all looking for. It's not this big targeted thing i think as long as you do it before you see player names it's just everyone being able to have their choice and play the game their way even if it doesn't go their way you better believe i'm gonna get serotonin when i click that button and a big red x comes up on that character and it's like custom band uh widowmaker and i'm gonna be like hell yeah i did and then widowmaker gets let through and i die a million times anyway but at least i'll have that moment of feeling like i can play the game the way i wanted to and then sometimes things would get banned. Um, so I just think it's overall a net positive. And with the idea of going back to our previous Overwatch League point, ranked is by far the first step. I think you started in an arcade mode, just see how people try it out, see people enjoy it. And then if that you have success there, you iterate on that. Then you try like a ranked season, make it a third. You know, it, remove open queue. No one likes open queue. If you like open queue, you're a psycho. Um, <laughs> you, you, put in, you put in a ban system uh, for like one season, see how it goes and then that could be the evolution of the game as you said svp we've had a couple of big changes to the game throughout the history of it we've had um hero uh hero lock where you can only have one hero then we had uh roll lock and then we had 5v5 i do think the band system will be one of those iterations in the future especially as more heroes come into the game and i think it would make a lot of people happy there are going to be your pain points of the mercy player as Duke said who's like I can't play Mercy 30% of the time. They're going to remember that 30% of the time that they can't play more than the 70% of the time that they can play Mercy because you're only going to remember the negatives, right? So I think that would be a massive pain point. But if you're a one trick and a hard one trick, as Jake said, 
I have no sympathy for you. This is a game where there's so many great diverse heroes. Like you should be at least able to play two heroes and have fun in that aspect, in my opinion. And that should be good for the overall health of the game because a majority of people want to play more heroes, even if it is only two or three. Yeah, very well said. A quick little applause there, I think. It also seems unlikely that people will continue on one trick as more heroes do get added. It seems it seems unlikely. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people will forever one trick a hero, but you think as more and more heroes are added, the idea is that more heroes have a chance to appeal to someone. Here's a little funny like uh, addendum, which was that roles will will probably prioritize different things that annoy them as well. And this is like a little very facetious point. But this is, it's a slight nerf to tanks because they're only one of them. And whatever annoys them is least likely to get banned as opposed to what annoys DPS and what annoys supports. Because if I'm the tank player in last season, I'm like, get rid of that fucking Arisa right now. She just spins at me all day and I can't do shit. But the support players are probably like, no, no, it's the it's the Sojourn. I want the Sojourn, not the game versus the tank. I'm like, I survived the one shot and what, mate? Like, I, I, I don't mind. Like, it's, the, it's the other thing that I don't like. So like, slight nerf to tank players. Tank players crying. Um, but... Okay, so let's let's talk then, yeah, implementation now, because we've kind of talked theory. So what would potentially be, like, the best and most pain-free way to add hero bans if we would ever put it in ranked? Because obviously people have concerns about, we already addressed the concerns about ban meta, but, like, one-tricking, stream sniping, or not stream sniping, but, you know, profile sniping, I guess. Because people already dislike having so many private profiles, though this is just another reason to keep your profile private, but then even then... At the highest level, people will be like, well, what about if you lock in and you see that, like, you know, Jake is on the team, I'm banning soldiers to fuck with his fun, lol, 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 you know, like, whatever. I know he's doing Just do it blind, yeah. you don't see the enemy roster. No, but he's saying yeah. you would go into your friends list, you would see that you went from in queue to in game, so you, and you're not on your, uh, my <laughs> team, so I'm going to shoot. And you side, so people marginal. would do that's that so shit. Marginal. People that's would the do that. That's no, the best. Cares? Remember, remember like, in 2018, no point, when no you 1%. saw that Jonak was queuing, you saw Fury was queuing, and you were like, I'm not queuing. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not queuing <laughs> for those guys. But, but I think that's such a marginal... Yeah, no point, no one percent. Because like, right. you'd have to, like, know that they got a game. I mean, I don't know. Like, that's so marginal. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not, that only works if you're on my friends list or if I'm streaming. Like, otherwise, yeah. there's no way for you to know that I got a game. Or even... Yeah that like I, or even you could do a blind to your own team like you're gonna take a risk because maybe i'm on your team and you ban my one trick hero you know like i mean right so so jake I don't think propose... for like me because even if i'm trolling on one trick i'll be like okay whatever i'll just place me else like it's not so so propose your system jake for like how am i go into ranked uh i mean now that you say it i think it could just be full blind like you vote without even knowing your own teammates um yeah, you could select a. I think you could either. I don't game, think you should know the enemy team the ever. I think that should be like for sure. You don't see like okay, I know that guy's name. He's a widow player. That's why I ban widow. You know, I think you should not for sure not see the enemy team. Maybe you use an argument for it's good to see your own teammates, so you know like, um, okay, like I know I have a widow one trick on my team. Maybe I don't ban widow this game. You know, I hope widow's widow's still in the game, um, even if I normally always ban widow. And that could be good because you'd be like, okay, if we get if I get a player on my team who I know is like a sim specialist, I'm not gonna ban sim. You know, I'm like gonna try to enable the sim with a ban maybe or whatever like i might have some strategy around it so knowing you're not screwing over your own teammate and then like you load it you're like oh sorry bro i banned sim like you know like that could add some friction within the team so maybe you just do it blind to the enemy team everybody votes and if there's a if there's a majority or or, or what is it a, a plurality then that would be the ban for your team if there's not it's like a coin flip between all the ties or the highest ties if there's like two two or all it's one vote then it's just a random coin flip the, the I, point I is not to make it like a consistent thing it's like that makes it very hard to be consistent in terms of like getting like in order to get the same bands especially i mean you can make it so you see your teammates votes or maybe you don't see your teammates votes they, I don't like, think you should. I think it should yeah, be random I mean, until you could also talk. <laughs> just to fly I, I don't know. into the screen. Like, you could have that, like you so. could be in the voice. So was in. Maybe it's just like I queue up in ranked and I have like checked on my before I queued up, I checked that like I'm an anti widowmaker player. And like that'll be my like most hated hero that I don't want to see in my games ever. And I don't even get any kind of like I don't even get to see the map, you know, like I don't get to see anything. I just it's like queuing up in StarCraft saying I don't want to play this map. I queue up in Overwatch, I just don't want to play Widowmaker, I don't want it in the game, you know. So it could even be that. That's like the ultimate system where it's like players are basically just saying the hero they hate the most in Overwatch. Like you just like <laughs> check a box for the hero you hate the most, and then you play the game normally. And you hope that other people hate the hero the same amount, or like at some percentage of the games, the hero you hate ends up being the one that wins the coin flip and gets banned for your team. You know, it should be twenty percent if it's all like even. You know, um, so like one fifth of the time you'll pick the ban. I mean. To me, that seems like there's a lot of like 
subtle ways you could change it based on like what information the player has when they make their decision about the band. But I think the voting is pretty straightforward. I think one band to start is pretty straightforward and very minimal. I think, honestly, you could probably have like two bands a team. Maybe it's okay, but whatever. Let's just start with one, like the most simple system as a as a beginning point. And it's just a, a way for players to indicate what they dislike the most in the game, the uh, what they don't want to see in the game playing with or against. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fellas, any I, yeah, reinforce? I, I, I agree with that. I, I think that is how I would implement it as well. I, the way I sort of like envision it, it's sort of like almost like the Valorant loading screen. Like when you queue in, you meet your teammates, you you can like hover over certain heroes. Now, like in Overwatch, when you select a hero, but you can talk to your teammates. And, you know, I, I'm already seeing the games where like there's a dual stack and like they join your your game and they just like ban Widow, ban Widow, ban Widow, ban Widow. And they just like force the other teammates to ban Widow because they have a strat, because they want to execute something or because they had a bad Widow game whatsoever. I much prefer the idea of like, joining a lobby and being able to talk with your teammates and hash it out and decide like, you know, this is probably what we're going for. And if you don't want to vote along with your team, fine. You know, you can have two members, you know, maybe they're not convincing. You can still select what your, you can still cast your vote um, according to your opinion. But I like the idea of interacting with your team. I like the idea of knowing the map beforehand, uh, but I don't want to see the enemy team. I don't want to just like purposefully like counter, you know, one, one tricks, stuff like that. So I, I actually yeah. disagree with that. I think I would not want to hear with my team. I think just because it, it brings the wrong emphasis of like, it's a lie that like, we're all going to work together because we're not, we're fucking not dog. <laughs> like just play the game. Like we're solo queuing. We don't give a fuck. Like I'm not like, I, I mean, you don't have to talk. We like, don't, you don't have to, you, but you then it's like, vote. you like, can. I, I mean, if it's me, I'm just queuing into the game. I'm like, insta locking the widow ban. I don't care what anyone else thinks. You know, like <laughs> screw it. Like but people but are going to be toxic. I think it, yeah, it, it gives that grief point. It gives people that potential yeah, to be people, like, I'm, oh. People are going to be toxic when I lock soldier every game and grief 40 games in a row just because I like am pissed off at Overwatch. Sure. I do that routinely. Like, it's no, like, Jake, I, like, the others, the others have a point. Like some people wouldn't want to be griefed like that. You don't like, want to be like well, badgered I mean, But I mean, like... Overwatch presents limitless opportunities to grief each other. Not voting for the same hero on the ban is like hardly the, Well, the, the thing is, yeah, I, I agree with you. Game, I agree with it. There's always more potential. Like people, if people want to grief, they'll grief. Whatever you, whatever opportunities you do or don't give them. So I agree with that fundamental point. But I think it's like, it's the game emphasizing too much of like, let's, you guys should all unify in your ideology. And also then, you know, as you've gone into the game, if you are that guy who's like, guys, ban Widow, ban Widow, ban Widow, and then your team don't ban Widow, you're now like, you now have that pain point to be with your team to be like, you didn't listen to me, you guys didn't ban Widow, as opposed to just like, oh, we came in blind, they didn't ban Widow, all right, I guess, you know, what can I do? We they didn't know I was going to tell them to ban Widow, right? So like, it mitigates that potential like grief point that may arise. But I'm not, I'm not like 100% against it, but I think personally, my emphasis would just be solo queue gamer, I lock in, these are the heroes I hate, and if I get them banned, whoopee and if not then uh shucks my Freedom? expectation is that you can let people talk but no one's gonna talk <laughs> like i yeah i don't think people would talk i i think you're gonna have those individual moments but as jake said people are gonna be toxic people are gonna blame others like regardless of everything that happens yes it's another pain point of where people could just be like i told you guys to ban widowmaker at the start of the game and then now we're losing to a widowmaker like that shit's gonna happen but like who cares like i think the benefit of having that option and being able to communicate with your team, I think is worth the the negativity Fair. that would come with it. Fair. I, I'm open to the idea. Frito? So someone could be like, don't ban Widow. I love Widow, you know? That's my one Maybe, trick. maybe. I'm a cracked Widow in Havana, guys. Don't ban her, don't ban her. Yeah, I'll be like, it sucks to be you, dog. Stop playing the hero. Stop playing the hero. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know, you Widow playing scum. <laughs> <laughs> I got you in Avoided for life. <laughs> me yeah. avoided. Uh, so... I actually, like, I don't feel the need of it uh, in ranked because I'm, like, top 500 peak player, not like a, I always play in that rank type player where uh, you guys often are or are, all are. Um, so that, like, Sojourn's annoying, for example, but it's not as must-picky as uh, is, is in those ranks. So my personal game experience, and I think most players' game experience, isn't because of the oppressiveness, it's more about the annoyance of it, I'd say. Like, and I still think there's an argument to be made there. Um, it's a more compelling argument when um, the gameplay is just like shut down by a combo or a hero um, at the highest levels of play in either Ranked or the Overwatch League. So I, I'm more convinced and compelled that it's necessary there. Um, but so, uh, so with that being said, I'll, I'll say that I think the implementation should be um, in order to increase the fun factor from that perspective as much as possible. And 
one thing that I think is like kind of interesting um, with Jake's system is I wonder if the it, the voting system as you've set it up like won't actually work because or or it'll be more random than not because if let's say a lot of people don't take it seriously and uh, or don't know what they want or don't agree and, and if we don't talk and we don't collaborate then there'll be 10 bands, let's say, and they're all across the board of the 32 heroes. And then it's like sort of like every map, there's a random ban. And if that's the case, I think a good percentage of time, we're going to feel like the system doesn't really do much. Because if it isn't targeting something that's like normally played on that map, then it's as if it doesn't exist. And then if so, is it adding anything really? I mean, or is it... troll the bands, but like... Even I'm not saying troll, but like... Widow on Junkertown. It's like, I'll ban Widow on Junkertown. And like the Widow player is going to ban Wrecking Ball. And like I don't know, the tank player is gonna ban Sigma because they don't want to play Sigma, and then like you know whatever, right? Like no, you're I saying mean, quite optimal ban, bans like, though. May, I think you should. Right? Well, but like, yeah, but so, will so they? Uh, be, maybe they will. Be, like, I mean, really, like you're just like grieving yourself to ban like an irrelevant hero. That I think you're saying that as like a top 500 player, though, is my point. Like no, but, you're, you're but saying all very you're, like, viable a picks. Player, you'll ban Bastion or whatever, right? Like you right. Know, like, like I don't. That's fine. Like because in your game, but like you'll ban whatever you don't. Then like. Like, I don't think anyone, like, whatever level you are, if you're in bronze and, like, people don't play Widowmaker or whatever, because, like, it, it, there's, like, an unpopular hero in bronze. I don't actually know this. Maybe Widowmaker's okay because people run straight lines in bronze. But whatever. Like, in my experience, like, so for, I'll do some example. I have, my real life friends who play Overwatch. A lot of them tell me, like, how Far Mercy is super strong and, like, how Bastion is really strong. And I'm like, yeah, like, whatever. <laughs> you know, like, I'll smile and nod. But, like, they're going to be banning those heroes. Obviously, I won't. But, like, they're not going to, like, if Hanzo is like an irrelevant hero for them, then they'll never ban Hanzo. But like it's whatever is in your games, you'll be banning the heroes you don't want to see. So Why would anyone ban a hero that they don't expect to see? I mean, if you your competitive player bias is showing. Ban, so so one of the biggest uh, findings like, in I'm not saying economic right theory about what they're banning. It, I just that it's in their games, like that they've seen it before. Yes. So this broke advertising in like the '60s. The theory was that human beings act in their own self interest. And the truth is we act based on our own primal impulses, not based on your own. So yes, a lot of people don't like those. Those are good picks for like metal rank annoyances, point pain points. I'd also say Sim and Torb are like hard meta in metal ranks at, on every single map, not just Li Zhang. So, so yes, in theory they will. But what I'm saying is let's say there's enough of a vote that doesn't know enough about the game or the meta or even for the ranked meta, the uh, metal rank meta, any, any rank meta in order to make like substantial votes so that multiple things get picked. I think in top 500, enough players like, this will work for, for GM in top 500 because it's consensus that like uh, Widow's good on Havana. So enough people will all, all vote that. I'm just saying there'll be a lot of games, I think, mathematically speaking, that there'll be, the votes will be diluted enough that the coin flip you're suggesting that be at the end phase if there isn't enough votes there'll be a lot of coin flips basically. And yeah. those coin flips are going to fall to like irrelevant heroes that may not have been played in the match anyway, therefore but robbing the system of any there power. There wouldn't be any irrelevant heroes in the vote because to one player, at least on the team, that wasn't an irrelevant hero. It's a hero that they didn't want to play with. Also, so yeah, that's that a good argument. Relevant. Because I hate Torb so much and it's in all my games in bronze, I'm going to ban Torb. Even if like we're on Junkertown and like Torb's not that good, we just play like Widow Hanzo, but... I don't want to see Torb in my game. So when what, I'm the I voted Torb and Torb wins the coin flip, then that's like that's like the system is working as intended. So one out of ten times flip. you'll at least get yours, no, no, right? Like in these one random because both teams would, would vote. So both it's teams gonna five, each, so maximum of five, five of a five hero coin flip. Because each team has five. Oh, they both get a ban in your system. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. right. Okay. Well, one out of five games you'll get get what you want. So maybe that's that's enough for us. But by definition, if your hero that you voted you voted for it. So if it gets banned, then like it is meaningful because you didn't want to play with it on this map. You had the information of the map and you saw your teammates and you said, I don't want Torb in this game. And if Torb wins the role, that like I don't care if it's like rational or not. You know, I'm not trying to make the point that like players are like right or they're gonna collaborate. I don't care if they collaborate. I don't care if it's just like one guy for some reason has like a vendetta against Torb and he never he bans Torb every game no matter what. And then Torb sometimes gets banned in his games. Like, that's fine. Like, you can do whatever you want with the system. It's just for you to express yourself. If there's, like, yes. one guy and voting Torb every map, maybe it's, you're not going to win very much, right? Because you're just relying on a five-hero tie into the coin flip that you win versus, like, me banning Widowmaker on Havana. Okay, maybe it's, like, more likely to come up because there's it's, like, a more popular sentiment. But even then, 
I mean, you could even do it where it's not they're like even though the plurality doesn't guarantee you anything, you could do it where like four votes to one, the one has a twenty percent. Um, I would say if there's a consensus, probably should go for that hero like every time. But winner takes all as opposed to if, if it's in the vote, if it's in the RNG coin flip, that's like considered a legitimate outcome because you the player who put it there feels that it's legitimate. So I'm not trying to argue anything like kind of like yes. truth. Or, but what or I'm or saying is when it's not Widow and everyone else is mad at that player, it's because because like before we said like Custa's like, yeah, I banned Widow. But what like are you the bullying and toxicity? Like if what if the Torb guy wins? <laughs> like, right. yes, he'll be happy like, about you, it. You'd have no way of knowing, Widow though. Votes, then I win. So I, no yeah. one's going to be mad at the guy for banning Torb. If we banned, like, Torb, Sig, Ball, Widow, Zen, and we're losing to Widow, I'm like, I'm so smart, guys. They picked Widow. Then, like, well, the four of the other people all pick something else. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, it's kind of an uphill battle for me to, like, flame the rest of the team all combined. You know, I think I think also, most toxicity comes well, I'm, from no, I'm saying the other way, when the minority wins, because if it's a random system based on, like... No, uh, no, 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 no. It's better if a, if there is a majority. Then I'm saying yeah. the only reason the Torb vote can win is if we all voted for random different things. And then... It's right, and I'm saying that can vote. happen a lot, yeah. because there's so many heroes sure. in the game. But now, then, yeah, then it's so, like be so mad about that? that yeah, like, so, this, so the point I would bring unlikely. up is that at worst, and then it's, then it's offensive, right? It, at worst, it's inoffensive. Well, I haven't got to really say my point, which is if you're allowed to collaborate at all, then at least you might be able to, to coordinate on that. I'm not saying I want that necessarily. I'm just like poking holes in the theory of this. Like, like, yeah, do, yeah. are we comfortable with a result? Before we, before we vote or as we vote or whatever. Like, I think it's fine. Because then, then it, that would be more. Because an alternative is maybe like a captain's mode or something, or someone has power, or you collaborate. Like one, oh, one of the, I one of the other two versions like as mode. how it I'm exists. I'm not calling like, anyone my captain in Android Watch yeah, Ranking. That's all I'm it, saying. It should just be like you don't have to call. You, you don't address them by their title, Custo. The I will. No, what? <laughs> you, you captain, don't even have to know. My captain, please ban Widowmaker. Um, <laughs> well, well, because if if it's a random system anyway, what if one random person was captain? Every well, few only, games or whatever, it's like kind of the same thing. So if there were yeah. any collaboration at all, if me and one other player are like, yeah, we both like, right, let's agree to ban Widowmaker. Then if the other three players just say screw you and ban random stuff, they would have to collaborate ev to beat us. So you get a huge advantage by being a collaborator. For, for instance, like if I want to ban Widow and you want to ban Hanzo, and then the rest of the players all want to ban like other random stuff, then we can agree and well, okay, let's just ban Widow. Like let's ban the sniper. Which one are we gonna ban? And then maybe we can have a consensus, and then we automatically win because the other threes voted for different stuff. So just two of us together is enough. And to duoing yes, becomes and, really but powerful. This also... And three stacking OP actually. Three stacking means you guarantee yeah, yeah, your yeah. ban. It would make it would, actually. There's a big problem if you think about stacking because then it's like yeah. okay, you just three stack. You like perma control the ban as long as you work together. You stack. You don't have to collaborate with anybody. Well, you make but... up a larger percent of the lobby. So yeah, exactly, exactly. But like, is that really that big of a deal? I don't know. Like yeah, maybe this. Three... Yeah, it's like yeah, well, if you maybe three stacking one against the thing, one guy once. Yeah, like but if, if you like, have a Widowmaker player in your team well, and they're like, oh, guys, just, I want to play Widowmaker. That's like, like some well, weird self-abnegation. Like, like the, the three stack is going to ban Widow even though they get the Widow one trick on their team. Like, well, they probably yeah. presumably want to win the game. So, yeah. Um, I, I do want to add in as well, like, I think in a in a world in which we do have this situation where there are five random bans happening, right? And it's just like chooses one random. That means that we're in a point where the system that we're trying to implement doesn't matter because like the reason we want to implement this system, right, is usually when you have an issue like Sojin was, you know, a couple of seasons ago where nobody wanted to play against Sojin, right? And people didn't like Sojin, a majority of people in the lobby didn't want to play against Sojin. That's really what this system is for. If we get to a point where people can't even agree to ban the same thing, then the game's working as intended. Having a ban for that, I think is interesting because it would be like kind of random what is and isn't in the game. But I don't think that's really the points that the system is trying to fight against. Yeah, I agree. Like I was alluding earlier, like at worst, it's inoffensive, right? If, if five people are all different heroes and, and like nobody cares what gets banned, yeah. then at worst, you're just like, oh, okay. So X, Y, Z got banned. I don't care. And at best, it's addressing a problem that multiple people feel is going to happen in this upcoming match, right? So... And it, think, it's still a valuable system on the macro scale because it still creates a useful yes. metric for the devs. Yeah. Yes. Because even in this one game, if like we're all voted for ten different heroes, then that's not that useful. But but still, we voted for those ten heroes, and not like there are a lot more than ten heroes in the game, right? So still, for the devs, they can see, okay, well, I mean, Widowmaker is not necessarily winning all the bands, but a lot of people hate this hero, you know. Even if they don't like, regardless of how often heroes actually ban, there's like the metric of how many times people vote for that hero, and then that's that's also a useful metric. But I think it is a good point. Like, in the end, if if there's no coordination at all and there's never there's no popularity to any one ban, then all you're getting is like it's like you're you're banning a hero 
you know, whatever, what's the percentage of like one hero not being in the game if it's like truly RNG of two heroes out of the game, right? It's like, how many heroes are there now? Like 30, 40, 40 38. 35? I thought it was way higher than that. I thought it was I, way higher than that. I, I might be off the like too, mid thirties, mid thirties, but like, so that means you're talking like five percent of the heroes are banned. Thirty six. I mean, thirty six. So it's like you basically have like a five percent roll, let's say, give or take, or no, it's it's better. It's like it's like a, a seven or eight percent roll for your hero being banned. If it was like a true like every single hero is equivalent probability to be banned, it's like two out of thirty six or whatever. So that's the that's the worst case scenario is like the system is useless and so it's a complete RNG and but so there's like a seven or eight percent chance of the, of it like messing with my experience that like my hero I want to play is banned. But how much is that even a big deal unless I'm like a psychopath who will abandon the game if my hero's banned? You know. Yeah. Okay. Any objections, Frito, or anything? Other points you want to raise to like what's been said? Yeah, I'm a little curious because I, I think what we've stumbled onto is that there would be kind of a ban meta for certain maps where a hero is like super dominant. And I'm just, I'm curious how, I can't remember if we said if there would be ever be a protect or are we just hoping that randomly no, sometimes it'll go through? Because like, I, I do think it's like, while I'm happy to see it in OWL more so. What the time on Junkertown, they should rework Junkertown. That's what I think. Well, I think we don't have any Widow player representation in this call. I think we all kind of don't. Like, I, I personally, I don't mind playing against Widow if there's no Mercy. So I, like, I hate the Mercy a little more. But I, mm. you know, I both also um, am not a fan of playing or playing against one-shots. But, I, I like, I'm a little concerned that we don't have protections in the system against certain maps always having a certain ban result. And this is also, by the way, I believe why, like, even Call of Duty and why Overwatch probably won't get a map vote system where there's certain maps that will always win against no matter whatever whatever else you put up. So therefore, you end up playing a disproportionate amount of a certain map. I think the same thing might happen for certain maps where um, a few heroes are going to be heavily targeted on those maps. We, and I, I just don't know if we have protections against that or we, if like... If, <laughs> I was just going to say, like, we had a discussion earlier. Like we, I asked you this question, you countered it earlier. I said... Well, what if the dev said, well, you know, you guys aren't picking what's best for right. you. Like, we're going to give your experience, you know, we, what, you're not playing the things we gave you. And you were like, well, yeah, but player agency trumps all of that. Like, if players don't like the thing, that's, that's like paramount to all of this. So, like, if Widow is getting banned all the time, does that not supersede the one Widow player's experience? Well, and also the other argument you also made, Frito, about it's it, like the Widow is only played on Juggertown and Havana. But then now I can ban Ball on some other map and now I play Widow here. Because I don't have to worry about like some hero that's going to screw me up on Widow. Man, I'm smart. Like, what a great argument, me. What it does is it like it like spreads the playtime out of the hero rather than being like Junker Town won the role. I can play Widowmaker. It can be like I love Widowmaker so much. Every single game, I'm going to try and get Tracer and Ball banned so I can play more Widowmaker as much as I possibly can. And I think for most players, I think they would take that trade. To have like a better chance like i don't even think the widow players are like let's go i play widow every single time on this map like i love it you know it's like i got joker town like even when i like playing like a one trick hero i don't like oh great time to play junk for the 40th time on Li Zhang. it's like all right whatever like i'll do it but i'm not i'd much rather have a, have a situation where like oh look at these bands i could probably play junk here even though i never played junk you know like it could probably work like you know echoes band so i can play junk on this this defense map where the flyers screw me up usually you know, like, like I think I think if anything, that's more desirable if you're a specialist player that you get to play your specialist hero on more unique situations rather than. So maybe you don't need the perfect it. map geo, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. The point. Exactly. Like at the moment, you don't we're need kind of. Town to be the widow map because you can make other maps into the widow map via occasionally getting your band. Yeah, and she's in the crossfire now because of the map pool. Essentially, having new maps that are we have like extra the, Havanas now. The <laughs> like, the game, right, like Genji yeah. and Sombra are both like garbage. So yeah. Tracer's like the only hero that deals with Widow well, and Tracer's not even like a strong counter Widow, especially if there's like Mercy in the game, or Tracer gets owned um, by all the really supports right widow. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I think, and then it's like a very skill based hero. Like only a like not most people can't play. You know, so it's like. In the end, it's like whatever heroes in the crossfire is a symptom of the patch and the maps and the battle. I mean, there's like a million reasons why that heroes in the crossfire. So I, those things will change. I wanted to add on to the, the thing you mentioned as well before about um, changing maps. Like if a certain hero gets banned too much on a certain map or a certain point. Um, just adding on to like the metric uh, part of the conversation where it's like the developers can actually like make meaningful changes based on just tracking 
ban statistics, whether it's for maps or banning certain heroes on maps or whatever that is. And, you know, maybe some map designer uh, in, in the Blizzard officers like get really, uh, you know, sad because they're like, well, you know, my amazing, you know, Widowmaker sight lines, they're not getting appreciated because people dislike it. Where it's like, well, they're the, the game's not fun enough. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it also allows you to make smaller changes. Like we're not asking for like Paris or Horizon Lunar Quantity reworks. Like it could just be like a simple thing. It's like, well, if Widowmaker is like really strong, on point A of Junkertown, add one box that makes her less good on Junkertown point A. That makes it a little bit easier to like navigate around. Like it, you just like, make a path that like to the to the defender high ground that isn't passable. We don't have to talk about specifically trade. what to check. Yeah, <laughs> Jason, right now but, I got the solution. The box <laughs> like, here's here's a diagram I drew earlier okay, on the He's been drawing this up. <laughs> More boxes is, is a widow buff. That's what's so funny. He's got like a tissue but, and he just quickly writes it on up with a pen and now that uh, tissue becomes like worth a million later I, on. I mean, that's just the idea came up to me because that's how you deal with widow on the map is you three blink tracer from like the right side to the high ground, but most heroes cannot do that. Yeah, yeah. so let's make them two blink. No, I don't, I don't kidding. I don't care. But just, I, I, this is why, I, again, like I just love the system because then as a developer, you can look at the band statistics and be like, well, Widowmaker gets banned on Junkertown 16% of the time. I, you just took 16% out of my ass. No idea if that's good or bad or, you know, the average, whatever. But you could use the 16% statistics and go, well, our goal is not to never have Widowmaker banned, but let's, make, let's reduce 16% to 10%. Like, you're, you're, you're almost like balancing Widowmaker on that map in a way that you couldn't previously by making small adjustments to maps around heroes being banned on those maps. And so you're making the heroes like still effective on those maps. They still have a high ban rate, but you're reducing their oppressiveness. And I think the, the limited statistic we have now, and that's been referenced a few times in the past, specifically the last couple of seasons is, well, some of the heroes that you dislike playing against, they, they, you know, they, they have a pretty, you know, they don't have as, as high of a pick rate as you, the player base, believe it to be. Or it could be like, well, actually, Sojourn, so Sojourn doesn't have as high of a win rate that you, the players, uh, complain and perceive it to be. But that's like the win rate is different from like the player perception and enjoyability of like playing against that hero. And that is where like the ban metric becomes so much more useful in that you're able to distinguish like effectiveness from, uh, what's sentiment. the word? Like, yeah, sentiment, right? And so I, I think just being able to track that, that ban metric as well, you can still have specialization and maps where Widowmaker is really good at, but you, because you track this metric now, you can make it slightly less annoying um, and, and, and adjust it in a way more calculated approach, whereas I don't think you can now without the ban system. And it also stops like wider criticisms over a certain hero, right? It's like people might be mad at or Widowmaker, like you alluded to this earlier, Frida, where it's like part of the reason why she's so annoying right now to people is because the hero, the map pools favor her. But if you can isolate that, like, okay, well, Widowmaker's getting banned on these maps and everywhere else, no one has a problem with her. It, it alleviates that wider community sentiment of like, this hero sucks and narrows it down because the devs have always said, like, we want your sentiment. Like, give, don't give us solutions. Give us your sentiment. Like, we want to know where the frustration points lie. And that gives you even more clear directions of, like, the frustration points are here, here, here. Nobody cares about Widowmaker on, you know, whatever map you want to pick, like, King's Row. Nobody cares about Widowmaker on King's Row. They care about her in these, these, these situations. You don't need to, like, dumpster the hero completely. You don't need to, like, rework every aspect of the hero. It's, like, in these scenarios is where the frustrations lie. So can you target getting, these like, scenarios? It's a really fine amount of data. Like, very, it's very fine-grained data that has a lot of complexity to it a lot of specification about like you can actually understand the meaning of the data rather than you know trying to parse it together i think from more obtuse sources across all ranks as well right because it yeah. would look the the banning data would be really interesting to look at across all ranks right because in the top level there's going to be a very different to the metal ranks as you were saying earlier jake there's going to be an impossible problem where they're like why why it's just like I don't know, Winston just banned in silver all the time. Like, how do you fix this? <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll learn something. We'll learn what something. Maybe, but but I, think, I think the odds of that would be, like, super low, right? Or, like, if it yeah, was probably. the case that Winston is somehow getting this, like, crazy ban rate, then there's there's something going on there. Like, it's not yeah. random, you know? If you have, like, a, like millions of players sample size, it's not, I assure you it's not random, you know? That, like, yeah. there's something going on. I mean, I think that's 
I think that wouldn't happen. That, that's just my hypothesis for Winston, at least. And so yeah. I can imagine he's like that. No, I somewhere. just there'll be some funny thing. There will going be on some outlier where suddenly we'll discover I think, something. I think those trends would actually reveal something interesting. Like if it was a statistically significant trend that's like observed over time and consistent, then I would say that there is something going on there. Maybe it's something no one has figured out yet, right? But it's like wow, it turns out that everybody. I mean, I think it'd be. I think the ones. I think people are more obvious about their pain points, like. But, but there'd be some pain points that are like a middle ground where it's like, oh, that's not exactly the hero I thought would be like the most banned in this level, but it's really popularly banned. Like, huh, like we didn't get that sentiment from talking to people on social media and like the BNF form because that's very like limit. Your sample size is so flawed. It's like flawed by how much people care, whether they want to say something, which is like a huge problem for your data because any kind of like survey you do is like there's a huge response voluntary, bias. Yeah. It's very, very difficult to like ever sort that out. But if it's in the data that's like passively input by basically every single person who plays the game or like the high, I would think almost, I would think maybe like 90 plus percent of the player base is going to be clicking a ban on their games. Maybe, maybe, I mean, it doesn't even have to be that high, right? If you're, if you're talking like 50% of the player base, that's insanely good data compared to what they're working with now, which is like, I don't, I don't know how the hell they track player sentiment. It's like super problematic, I would guess from like a, you know, like scientific perspective. In terms of like what hero you don't like the most, like how, how the hell do you know that? Like where are you getting that data as as a Blizzard dev? I, I can't imagine. I mean, this is I would say without a doubt a better source of data than whatever they're using now. Hundred percent, really well said, actually. And I just want to remark that as this call has gone on, Jake has quietly shifted his chair over towards Moon <laughs> Frito. He, slid, he slid, his, slid his way here. I don't know if that's a sort of you know deep metaphor. Right, supposed to be Freud, to you. A Freudian, a Freudian slide that he's coming over to our side. I think I'm in I a like different it. place on my. Cam. I'm at the edge on my cam. So this yeah, is yeah, yeah. The edge. yeah. Like you're you're off the screen there on me, but like yeah. I mean, uh, uh, any other points? I know I've taken a lot of you guys' time. So any other points on this discussion? Then we'll head to concluding thoughts. I think we've hit the nail on the head. I think we've come to a somewhat of a general agreement. Mm. I like it. Okay, then in that case, I will let each of you kind of give your summaries of, you know, both the pro, taking both the pro level and the rank level into account. You can go ahead and be like, okay, so my vision is in Overwatch League, no bans. In the rank system, we have one ban like this. In Overwatch League, I want the Johnny system, I want the Jake system, whatever it is that you want, right? So just summarize your stance, uh, and we'll see if we've had any sort of growth or if we've just had a good exchange of ideas. So I'll start with Custa. Custa, what's your summary? Uh, I believe that this rank system is really worth looking into and digging into, uh, not just like throwing it into ranked because I think there's going to be a lot of negative sentiment around it, and there's probably going to be pain points that we don't even realize exist. So going through the arcade into potentially replacing open queue for a season and then hopefully ranked. And I would like to go through that entire process before we even think about putting it into the Overwatch League. Um, if we never get it in ranked, like let's say we go through this entire year, we don't get it in ranked, the developers don't seem that interested in it. I would be down to sort of have that conversation again going into next season if we have another situation where the metas get dry, we're having issues where the developers aren't able to keep the game fresh. Um, but I want to give them benefit of the doubt. So I think... Right now, for the Overwatch League, do nothing. But if we do go into the Overwatch League with it, I'd like to go into the Jake system just off of the bat right now. See, this is why I wanted to name him like this, because now Jake can have that credit. He can be like, yeah, the Jake oh, no, system. Oh, yeah, we can't do this. I'm going to credit Jake, Jake when system. he fixes the Overwatch <laughs> League, and then the he's going to be a translator, system. a player, a coach, a fixer <laughs> of the Overwatch League, commissioner. It'll be, in his Wikipedia, it'll be in his Wikipedia page decades from now. There'll be people be like, man, I'm so glad we have the Jake system. Who who is Jake, by the way? Oh, <laughs> Jake, Jake. all-star legend of the of the Team USA, Soldier 76 locker. Okay. Um we have Johnny then. Johnny, go ahead. What's your summary? Push the propaganda for the uh, Johnny system. Make write your name. Yeah, history. I mean, I, you know, I'm I'm just really happy because we went three hours and no one no one ever pointed it out that the difference that my my band systems are actually different from ranked and the Overwatch League, which it's always typically a no-no. Like it's supposed to be the same experience, both in professional play and ranked play, and that is honestly like the biggest counter argument. It's like, okay, well, you're gonna play ranked and you're gonna ban a hero each time every map you play in ranked, but you only want to ban one time per series in the Overwatch League. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Um, I'd say the difference is, although it's something I just came up on the spot and it's not a well-defined argument, is that well, if you play in the Overwatch League you actually know who you're playing against. Like, you know if you're going to play, like, against Ants, and it's like, oh, well, we'll just, you know, counter Ants or whatever. In Ranked, you probably, according to the system that we sort of pseudo-developed, like, you won't know who you're playing against. And so 
it, it, it won't be as effective uh, banning. You'll be banning more for your personal satisfaction of the game, whereas pro teams are banning for probably like an advantage within the game, which I think are kind of like different in that regard. So I think it, uh, I, I think it deserves a different system in that regard. I think banning each map in the Overwatch League would just be too much personally. So I'm sticking to my ones uh, per series um, argument. And that's about it. I'd look forward to uh, using a blind kind of like hero ban um, in ranked. I, I, I think it'd be fun to trial. I think the one thing I'd like to point out to the devs is that like I don't know like how effective this would be to just put it in like an arcade mode kind of thing. Like I don't know how much use it would get. I don't know if you'd get proper amount of data, enough feedback, appropriate feedback, because I simply don't know if enough players would participate in an experiment like that to actually like I I don't I don't know. I you know every every developer probably wants like a PTR or like somewhere to test things before he goes live. But the unfortunate reality of things is, like, when I start Overwatch, I don't even open Arcade. Like, I don't, I don't go there. I don't, I'm not going to participate in experiments for the sake of your data point. Like, I just want to play the game. And so I think the unfortunate reality is, if you're a developer, you kind of have to just commit and try it and be like, hey, guys, here's the new bl blog from Aaron. We're trying it for Season 5. We're trying Hero Bands. Deal with it. Come back Season 6 if you don't like it. And you ca I think you kind of just have to do it that way. I do think that it should only be in ranked. It shouldn't be in quick play. Quick play, don't, don't bother about bans. Um, I think my second thing would be, I don't want to try it in the Overwatch League regular season or stage tournaments for that matter, but why can't we have a fun Overwatch League tournament where we try all systems like this? Like, I, I think that when people think of Overwatch League, it's very much like, you know, suit it up, suit and tie, just like the professional tier one league or whatever. But there's, there, there should be room for Overwatch League to have fun tournaments and fun content on the side as well. Um, and, you know, maybe that's the Pro-Am, you know, where we open things up for contenders teams or Tier 2 teams or whatever. But I think that there should be ways to trial the Overwatch League rule set as well without having to, like, set it in stone for, like, the, the, the official tournaments. Like, it can be fun stuff on the side as well. So, you know, if, if we tried... Uh, some kind of hero band system. I'm not even going to say the Johnny system or the, uh, the Jake system, like some kind of system in the Overwatch League. I think you can do that. And I think the pros of the league enjoy it. From, from my experience, the, the pros in the Overwatch League, they actually enjoy having like, a, you know, a kind of like a conversation with the developers about these things. And there are very smart people in the Overwatch League, uh, players that is, that like actually have very educated opinions uh, that they can provide the developers with. And I think that before trialing a tournament like this, I mean, they're contracted, they get paid to play the game. They'd probably like to get paid to make a more educated decision about the way they want to play the game. Um, and so, you know, I'd, I'd open things up and be like, hey, Overwatch League, why don't you trial a tournament like this at some point to fill some time, fill a week and stuff like that. Um, and finally, I hope this gets done so that we can slowly take over uh, the developer team and make it a more RuneScape classic kind of thing where the community just votes on all the balance changes and they vote on everything that's going on in the game. And it's purely straw poll based, uh, joking, of course. Uh, but it, it would be kind of fun in a, in, a, in a separate reality where it's like to give context in, in, in classic RuneScape, they just like they put up a poll like in the city center and it's like, if you want us to introduce this change, vote yes or no, and then the community just like votes yes or no, and it's like, all right, you voted yes, here you go. And I would love to see that in the game, where it's like, well, are we mercy, uh, nerfing mercy? If the community goes to ballot forum and just like presses yes or no, well, you guys nerfed mercy, there you go, enjoy it. It's on the ballot so, net forums your, were yeah. fucked, the mercy yeah, players exactly. are prominent there. <laughs> Dude, imagine the ad revenue they get from the their website. Range. Forcing yeah, the players there. You get to cross their shoot, yes or no? <laughs> Half the people miss because they can't hit it right. No. As a British person, <laughs> as a British person, well, I'm getting. No I'm getting <laughs> As a British person, I'm getting massive PTSD as well of like referendum noises where I'm like, no, oh, the, the referendum, <laughs> they're gonna, no, no, we're gonna get a blitz. Let's not uh, get there, I'm joking. Let's, let's not go there, let's there. not go No, I appreciate that point. I think, I, I think you make a good point as well about like, well, you, you can put it in the arcade, but people play it for like two days and then they'll stop. So I think yeah. at a certain point in time, the developers have to be like, we think this is the best decision for the game. We're throwing it in. My addendum would be, why not do it halfway through a season where their mid-season balance patch comes in? Because then... You've got like the hype of like something new in the middle of the season 
and all the casual i'm just spitballing this could be a dumb idea but like then all the casuals are gone as well so like all the people who tune in to play the new hero play and then they leave and then all the people who are actually like i'm bored of this meta two weeks in they can now start hero banning stuff for like half a season and then they can be like if it goes badly they can be like oh nope let's not I do that again I think that I just want to like chime in that. I think the thing that like we haven't really talked about it because we are all like high end people. Like there is a large percentage of the community that just don't want hero bands, right? Like and that course, do play yeah. the game consistently as well. It's not just the casuals who don't like the idea of hero bands. There are people out there with absolutely valid reasons. Um, but that's why my worry about just like sort of soft launching it and like forcing it into like, especially in the middle of a season where some people really care about their ranks in a season, like that would fair, that, fair that would be my complaint with that. Although counterpoint would be like well, we change the balance quite radically sometimes in the middle of a season and screw that all up anyway yeah. so is the is adding the hero bands that much but yeah i agree that it's always hard to know we can in our bubble theory craft and say oh well we all agree on hero bands but like you know it's hard to know what that number actually looks like of people who are like hero bands will be good hero bands will be bad so yeah this is this, this is where thankfully it's not our job to worry about it we just throw the <laughs> ideas out and the devs have to worry about how they whether it's actually just something throw shit at the wall and give exactly <laughs> we are the monk apes together strong we are the monkeys we just like pick up the feces and we toss it and it's up to them to figure out what's i good. think i think we need to work on the branding of hero bands guys we need to get together after this podcast and we can't call it hero bands because people true. hate the idea of hero bands we need to rename it what we about hero liberation the top one percent we need to rephrase it to make it better for the casual community. Let's call it democracy, and we'll just put Ooh. we're adding democracy into Overwatch oh, rank, yeah. and then and, and, like you know it. people like love it. democracy, right? New patch introduces democracy. I like it. Yeah, democracy or, or player agency, whatever, something like yeah, that. yeah. Player agency, the player yeah. automation hero system. choice. Hero choice. Well, no. hero choice. Well, you have no? hero choice. Everyone wants hero <laughs> choice, right? You gotta package it. Johnny's on the branding already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. We'll have to have a few back and forths on that. Okay, Jake, what's All your right. what's your All summary right, on quick. your two stances? Yeah, uh, I agree with Johnny. Putting in arcade is kind of crap. Like arcade is arcade. It's like a meme. Like I don't know. I don't even. I only play that for like challenges when I'm playing with friends. Like no one's. Gonna, it's not gonna. It's not really gonna tell you if the system's gonna work or not in rank. It could like get the UI working pro like properly, I guess, but like it's yeah. not gonna, it's not gonna mean anything because ranked is like a meme and anyone, yeah, whatever. Or I mean, arcade is like a total meme, so it's just fine. It's like for fun. But I think they they kind of do have to just take a risk and soft launch it. If if, if they ever decide to do it, it has to just like pop into ranked because I agree it shouldn't be in quick play. Quick plays, do whatever you want. Um, so it's got to be in ranked. I think Overwatch League. Agree with Scott. Not don't just drop it in fresh the Overwatch League. Let's see how it goes. Play it in ranked. I think to to Scott, you made a point about oh, like you don't want the pro scene to be different from or who was it? Was it you, Scott? Or yeah, yeah, be I different from earlier, the ranked. Yeah. I think there's a huge difference in like let's say the hero pool situation where it was like or like when a new patch drops and it's like okay, Diva has been reworked and like now shoots micro missiles and I like in my pro games she doesn't do that and yeah. so i'm playing diva in ranked because i want to practice diva but she just does a different thing and i i can't access what i need to practice i think that's very different in, under a band system because sure there will be like occasional games where you're you're the hero you want to practice is banned but since if this is adopted in the overwatch league which like i'm not saying it should be immediately it should be tested first but and like i love johnny's idea of let's have a tournament where it, we just put this role set for a one-off tournament put a cash prize on it go like that's awesome that's the perfect way to test it so we do that, but if it's in ranked, it's not going to affect players' practice negatively because, sure, some fraction of the games, the, like you want to practice Widowmaker for your pro team, but some, so some fraction of the games you can't play Widowmaker, but it's very marginal. I mean, like you can play Widowmaker, whatever it is, 90% of the time, you know, if Widowmaker's banned 10% of the time. So I don't think any pro player is going to be like, oh no, you know, like my practice is 10% less efficient. I think that's a little unreasonable from the pro players. I think what is reasonable from the pro players is like, I need to play May. I cannot play May. Like, yeah. that is a problem. Like, that, like you cannot play May at all in ranked. You know what I mean? 0% of the time you can play May. So the, that's a huge issue for practice. Or there's like a huge rework on a hero. I cannot play the old version of this hero. It doesn't exist anymore in ranked. So it's like, that's like, we're talking about 100% efficiency loss in your practice versus a ban system that is like a 10% efficiency loss in the worst case could be zero if your hero's not getting banned um, so yeah so basically i think it's fine if the rank system is like marginally different than competitive especially because if this ever did get introduced in competitive and there was some difference in like oh throughout the series we have different bands versus a rank game is only one but it's like okay well it's pretty much the same like every rank game is going to have one band from each team 
And same is going to happen in your match. In your match, okay, the bands will be, like, intelligent with the teams planning about how to use them. But is it, is it that different? I mean, it's like, like I don't know. I think it's, like, almost the same situation. When you play a ranked game, like, like some of the heroes will be randomly cycled out. You might occasionally be forced to play a different hero. In the pro match, you'll be faced to, forced to play different heroes more often because the bands will be, like, better targeted to actually impact you. But, I mean, I, I don't know if you could ask for better than that. Like, oh, no, the casual players have to make more yeah. precise bands to reflect the competitive game I, I think that's like not a relevant enough difference to affect like how they design it fair i like it and frito for your pov to expand on that there uh, another concern but beyond practice is the game looking too different but i think that's already the case and part of the reason why i want a ban system is because for the average player being able to swap your strategy has like a big effect on um your ability to win, whereas as we know with meta resistant comps and combos and, you know, uh, um, uh, swap immune or <laughs> uh, costly comps, there's a lot of reasons why that doesn't happen. And so therefore the ban system sort of of any description will help that look more in my theory anyway, in my, in my belief, uh, like the average player's game. So that's kind of my goal in it above um having a ban system in ranked. Like, I, I I think there's enough variety, actually, normally, that it's like, I'm not necessarily... Other than Season 2 meta and patch, uh, normally, when the game's balanced well, I don't, like, feel like it, it's required for the game to, like, function or anything for most players, but um, you definitely don't want um, there to be one in Owl and not in ranked. Like, it would probably have... It would definitely need to uh, coincide a bit. So at least we're, like, all in the same lexicon uh, of... Uh, terminology and and sort of like the way the game flow works uh, or all on the same page there would be good i hope that the tournament that the test tournament they do they don't like try too safe so it's like uh you guys have really added a lot of reasonable opinions on how it could potentially one day work as like the final format because we're taking this seriously but these like professional and streamer tournaments that are getting run that are test tournaments i think they can maybe be like a little bit uh veer a bit more on the creative side and a little bit more transformative and then we maybe the next iteration can be walked back a bit more reasonable reasonably since it's not um the whole season on the line or anything it's just like a, a one-off tournament so I, I hope they're experimental to that degree and try for a slightly more transformative system as opposed to a, a, a less destructive one in order to maximize that. Um, what, what's also the premise of what we're supposed to close here? Did I hit all the uh, points yeah, there? Just your feeling, yeah, I think that's your, your feelings on hero bands for pro and for ranked, like your summary on them. And I think you've given that. Yeah, there we go. That's my bit. Okay, I will I will just feed back on what everyone said. I think to your point, Frito, I, I, I see the reasonableness of like, well, let's experiment now that we have the chance. There's one danger of that, which is public perception. And that's if you go wild with hero bands, and then they go badly, you kind of cause lasting damage to the public's or even the player, like the pro player ideology of like what a hero ban might look like. That's exactly what hero pools was, right? Like it's so etched into the mind of the community where they're like, no, not hero bans because we had hero pools and look how bad that was. So I feel like it causes these like, you know, false, like these red herrings of like, this is what it would be like. See, this is what they want to do. I I'm okay if they just add one hero ban and people are like, yeah, that was fine. Oh, the system and, we wanted. That, that that was the last part of our concluding thoughts. So, mm -hmm. I, to that degree, like I, I hope there's a, at least, I would be willing to sacrifice the protect to keep the loser picks one ban because I, I really like the series transforming over time idea gotcha. as opposed to the the one set one. Like that, like I think, yeah, yeah, that's totally fair. I think to summarize my feelings, uh, I agree with a lot of what the guy said where I, I'd love to see Overwatch League experiment with this. I think I'm, I'm okay with whatever version. I just want to see a version, but I'm, I'm down for either the Johnny system or the Jake system. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy either way. I think it, I think it's even more needed in ranked from a player pers like experience. I think at, at pro level, it's interesting. It has intrigue. It doesn't necessarily like solve issues. It's more like, it's this tactical, like nouse. I think for rank, it is needed. I think, People are forgetting right now that just because we have a very good balance patch right now, I am I am personally convinced, and I could be wrong, so I'm I'm down to be wrong. I'm personally convinced we will have more time with unbalanced metas than with balanced metas. I think more frequently we will have times where sh shit is wacky. And also I think something that hasn't been mentioned I'll just touch on before we conclude is that from now on till forever, we're going to have at least two weeks before a patch can come through. Like they have to lock patches in two weeks in advance. 
So like whenever stuff is busted, it will take minimum like, and realistically it won't even be two weeks because they drop a thing. We play it for a while. We get angry about it. And then when they decide to do something about it, two weeks after that, we will see the thing. And that's where I think Hero Bands comes in. That's where Hero Bands alleviates the player like sentiment, frustration of like, we don't want to have to wait a month before the thing is fixed. Let us ban the thing while you're fixing the thing. Because I don't think it's a realistic expectation for the devs to always be on top, to always be dropping patches. Not with Now that we've cross-play with console, this is not a game that can be patched frequent, frequently. Like This is not a game that can be patched every single day. So the the sort of that time period where we're frustrated can be alleviated by Hero Vance, which is why I think they're cool. And again, I think that they kind of solve different problems at different ELOs. They're not gonna fix the game, they kinda of help make it less frustrating. So I, I wanna I, Yeah, go ahead. So, I was gonna say I know I, I just because I thought this was a really interesting point. Something that actually has existed in Overwatch hasn't existed in Overwatch 2 is Maybe this is a selfish thing on the top end, but we have not been playing ranked in a situation where Overwatch League is also parallel to it as yes, well. Because yes. that create that heavily dictates how ranked is played because people just watch what the Overwatch League players are doing and do it as well. So as much as the metas are very all over the place right now, as soon as Overwatch League comes back, Overwatch ranked at the highest end will pretty much mirror that and we'll be playing that time and time again. This happens every single off season. Everyone's like, look at how versatile it is. And then we go back to playing the same five heroes that the outplayers are playing. Because people aren't like spending their lives figuring out the best exactly, in the right? world. Aren't, you know, screaming each other all day, every single day to find the right comp that is actually optimized against all counters and even using, figure out which counters are good for what, and et cetera. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Johnny, anything to add? No, I feel pretty good. This was uh, an awesome conversation. You did a great job hosting. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, moderating. Plus one. Credit, credit to you, SVB. You're a goat. The best Thank in the you, business, man. baby. Right best here. Best in the business. Hell no, yeah. No, the, I want to be close second, but you can be the goat. <laughs> 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 nah, the best in the business right next to me. So thank you guys, either side of me, these goats here for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Uh, as always, guys, it's, it's been uh, like truly insightful and sparks joy, as, as uh, Marie Kondo would say. It sparks joy in me to... <laughs> to talk to you guys and kind of exchange ideas. So I'm glad we were able to do this. And on an important topic, I think dear to certainly many of our hearts. Uh, so mm -hmm. thank you very much, guys. Please go show these guys some love. Uh, go follow them. Go support them in whatever venture they have. Links will be in the video description. But for now, it's peace out from us. So have a good rest of your night, guys. Peace out. Adios. All right.